Black Alpha Network, home of black excellence, power to the people. All right, mic check, one, two, one, two. Mic check, one, two, one, two. Much love and respect, everybody. Certified salute from the Black Alpha Network. Hope everybody's doing good. Hope everybody's lovely right now. There's a hell of a lot going on in the United States of America, and the whole damn world is watching, and we are watching the closest, family, because we built this country. We're going to talk about this election, family. We're going to break all the backdoor, backsliding, backhanded things happening, because y'all know that's what's happening, but nobody's going to be able to bring the truth like we bring the truth. Nobody's going to bring the receipts like we bring the receipts. And we're going to predict, we're going to forecast everything that is about to happen. Why? Is because when you understand the way the system works and you understand the way people operate, then you understand what their next move is. The best indication of future behavior is past behavior. And if you look at some of the previous elections and you look at some of the things that have occurred, then you know exactly what the game plan and the blueprint is. So to the title, everybody. Too big to rig in 2024, which comes up in a few days. And the answer to that, we will find out. But the speculation is heavy. Everybody is watching and it's starting to look more and more like they are trying to plot. We have receipts on that. And I got brothers and sisters throughout the whole country, all the 50 states. And I'm going to go ahead and put this on the table right now. You talk about voter, right, family? I want you to see everything that's going on right now in this country. How many times do you hear an issue come up and it benefits Kamala Harris and the Democrats? When was the last time you seen some type of election interference and it benefited Donald Trump or it benefited the Republicans? I'm sorry, when it's 99.9% .9 of the time this issue comes up and it 99.9% .9 of the time benefits Kamala and the Democrats, then you have your suspect. And I'm going to put this clear. We're talking about reality. We're talking about what our eyes see. Now, I know that the Democrats, they want to tell you not to trust your eyes. All right. You got 22 million illegals and they tell you it's just five. All right. You got FEMA running out of money because they're giving it to those 22 million illegals. But they're telling us that FEMA's got all the money. They're telling us that Venezuelan gangs aren't taking over apartments. And you're literally seeing the video of them taking over apartment buildings. So I want you to think about the difference between the citizens and the system. And now I want you to see they're already rolling out all the excuses. Who's seen the footage in Pennsylvania where they already ran an ad or they already had up a graphic of Kamala Harris winning and beating Donald Trump in an election that don't happen until Tuesday? Last time I checked, today's not Tuesday. Last time I checked, how the hell did you have that graphic up? And again, like I just said, not to mention the illegals voting, which is happening mentioned the court cases. Now, out of nowhere, they put up a graphic. And guess who the graphic benefits? Kamala. I just sat here and told you 99.9% .9 of the times where you see some type of election interference, it benefits the Democrats. So now they put out a graphic and guess who that benefited? The Democrats. You already see it. So the fact that we sit here for four years. And we tell everybody and they came out the gate and just did it to the point, family. Are they really trying to hide it? Because you have to understand there is a multi billion dollar apparatus. And I don't care what no damn body says. No Democratic shield, no sassy K high person is going to come and tell us otherwise. You know why? Because those same people tell us that there is no immigration crisis. Let me tell you. All right. I want y'all to think about that. Walk outside right now. Go to the store. Y'all going to see migrants riding around in buses, got interpreters, got handlers. Very, very well taken care of. We've seen the actual receipts in their EBT cards that had thousands of dollars on it. The Democrats say that's not happening. Nope. Nothing to see here, folks. Everybody go home. So remember, the people telling you that there's no such thing as voter are the same people telling you that there's no such thing as a migrant crisis. And if there was a migrant crisis, it's really just Donald Trump's fault anyway. They already have the game plan laid out, y'all. It's already in play. You don't put up graphics a week before the election and it says Kamala Harris already won. Can you all imagine that with the lotto? Can you imagine that they already had the person who was going to win the mega millions a week prior? Right. You know what you'd say? You say that that was a fix. You say that that's all a setup. You would say that that was planned. You would say that that is completely contrived. It's the same exact thing going on in the United States of America. It's just happenstance. It doesn't just go on like that. It's not a coincidence. All right. You also have to look at the news media right now. 
The news media runs 24-7 news coverage that is anti-Donald Trump. They've actually did statistic breakdowns of who gets the better coverage and who gets the best news media appearances. Kamala Harris got that by a landslide. It's not even close. Media-wise, this has been the most slanted election in American history. Basically, every day you wake up, they tell you Kamala Harris is an angel and she's black. And Donald Trump is an evil and according to Joe Biden, his supporters, all 250 million of them are garbage. Now, think about the garbage statement. Joe Biden comes out and makes that statement about Trump supporters. What would happen if Donald Trump said Kamala Harris supporters are garbage? What would, would y'all not ever see the end of that? It would be a damn marathon on TV all damn day long. So remember, the same people who control the media are the same people who are pulling the strings. Look at the apparatus, y'all. You're going to have a lot of people out there that's going to talk about the subject, but ain't nobody going to talk about it like Black Alpha. We're going to go real today because I don't really give a damn. It's all about the American people having a sincere process, the same thing they teach us, right? They teach us, especially as Black people, that we need to be honorable. We need to turn the other cheek. We need to be the nicest people, let people abuse you, beat you down and everything. But they don't hold that within the system of voting. So no, the same thing they tell us we need to do we going to tell them that's what they need to do, because this is an election system that is supposed to operate and function properly. However, whenever they want their person in, shall I say person, I use that you know very loosely, because a lot of times it's the whole ideology that they want in. Whenever they want them in family, they bend every single rule they can find. Now, I've already broke down three or four different ones, and I'm going to bring anybody up because I want people to know what's going on. And I want to hear what's going on in your city, town, and state. How many of you guys have seen? The footage that has went massively viral of the Donald Trump guy, uh, Donald Trump supporter, he goes to vote. And as he's clicking on the button for Donald Trump, he keeps going to say Kamala. Again, there goes that 99.9% .9 of the time that voter benefits the Democrats. You don't see it the other way around, y'all. You have yet to see where someone is going to vote for Kamala Harris and somehow the vote goes to Donald Trump. You ain't seen that yet. You ain't seen that. So once again, you have your suspect, family. We're going to be some detectives up in here. All right. If this was a criminal investigation, you already know who is the prime suspect. All right. Simply based on the facts, not what they say on television, not what they say on social media, by what you've seen with your own eyes. You got people out there automatically, family. You're pressing Donald Trump's name and it is clicking Kamala Harris. This is what people literally have out there. It's went viral. Have you seen it on the news yet? Has MSNBC covered it or are they still talking about that joke from the whack comedian a couple days ago? You see what I'm saying now? You see that they want to promote that 24-7 at nausea, but they don't want to talk about this right here. But you see it on social media. Social media is changing this election. Let's go back two weeks ago. I think it was about a week and a half ago. I want to say it was in Galveston, Texas. If I'm not mistaken, somebody let me know if I'm wrong. Where the gentleman says, I went and I voted for Donald Trump and my receipt printed out Kamala. Here you go again. Uh-oh. Number 3,032, y'all, another instance that goes and it benefits the Democrats. Yep, again. So you got this all across the board. People are actually on the machine, hitting the machine, saying Donald Trump is clicking Kamala Harris. Someone actually clicks Donald Trump and then it prints back Kamala Harris. And remember, hitting it on the machine is one thing. They give you the print, you give them the print, you put it in a little machine and they allegedly count it. So it's very, very significant if that's what they do, y'all. It's very significant that that's what they do. Now, y'all remember hearing this? This is another item here. I mean, we just running out of them. Somebody tell me when we get these things that benefit Donald Trump or even the third party. You know what I'm saying? It ain't just Donald Trump and the Republicans. It's also the third party. You don't hear this benefiting anyone other than Kamala Harris and the Democrats. It's the same thing. It ain't no accident, y'all. Let's go to another one. Y'all remember those ballots, those ballot boxes that got set on fire? I want to say up there in the Pacific Northwest just a few days ago. Here goes another item, y'all. I like to believe here in the next uh, 10 minutes, we're going to drop another 100 receipts. And I like to believe in the last 10 minutes, we done already dropped more receipts than any mass media has put out there, family. It's very simple. It's not that difficult. It's not rocket science, y'all. All you got to do is just look, all right? A third grader sees that there's some real BS occurring right here. You also seen, I want to say, was it in, might have been Indiana. I know, obviously, in Kentucky, it was going on. You're seeing people telling us that these machines are just broken. Can't account for them. The machines just ain't working. All right. And then on top of all of that, they have debated with us left and right for the longest amount of time, telling us what illegals cannot vote in the election. That's what they've been telling us, y'all. Illegals cannot vote in this election. No way, no how. 
Y'all been seeing that video of the Haitian guy who's running around bragging and saying that he just voted for Kamala? Again, Kamala. Y'all see that? So we literally have these illegals. And by the way, this isn't illegal. It wasn't just some random person. All right. You had these illegals running around here and they just telling you, hell yeah, man, I voted for Kamala. Yep, you damn right. You damn right. And let me tell you something. By the time you see one, about 100 have happened. By the time you see 100, it's been 1,000. You go ahead and do the math. You keep on adding to it, y'all. So illegals have been out here. And how long have we been exposing the fact that illegals have been voting or trying to vote in America? Family, the Democrats are the only ones who resist not having voter ID. The Democrats are the only ones who resist that. Once again, if this was a criminal investigation or a, just a simple civic investigation, they would be the prime suspects. You don't see nobody in America that wants to see illegals vote except for the Democrats. They're out here fighting for the right to have Democrats get the illegal alien vote. That's what they've been doing. Now, talk about reparations for foundational black Americans. No, they don't want that. You talk about closing the borders. They don't want that. You talk about simple resources that benefit your average everyday working class proletarian American. Nope. They have no energy or effort for those. But when it comes to illegal aliens, oh, they'll walk you down. They'll roll up their sleeves and fight you over that. Let it be something that benefits black Americans, white Americans, Latino Americans, just a regular average everyday American. And the Democrats don't give a damn about that. Won't give you one inch of energy. Let it be something that benefits illegals. And then voila, they'll fight you for it. That's the difference between them and everyone else. Let's go to Pennsylvania. Oh, I got receipts, family. This is a factual reality one about things that have been going on within the last few days. All right. Let's go to Pennsylvania. In Pennsylvania, there were a polling site where they were basically telling people, just give us your stuff and we'll go put it in later and y'all go home. Let's go there. This just happened two days ago. They said, y'all give us your stuff and they just give it us. We'll turn it in. So basically someone's saying, give me your car keys and I'll go around the world with it and maybe I'll bring your car home later on. Or give me a wallet or your purse and I'll get it back to you later. Trust me. All right. And they were sending people home. They were telling people, y'all got to go get up out of here. All right. The Republican committee, as well as with Donald Trump in conjunction together, they actually ended up suing this place. And do you know they won? They actually ended up winning. And the judge said that they had to keep those polling places open until 5 p.m. I want to say they closed it maybe two or three. So they extended it an extra two or three hours. How did the judge agree with the Republicans about voter interference if there isn't any? Is that not? The biggest admission when an actual judge agrees with it and then the judge says, no, nope, keep the places open because we have detected some type of abnormal activity. You see what we're talking about? This is all within the last week, y'all. So you seen that the judge said, no, nope, -uh, there's a problem with that. No, 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 no. We're going to go ahead and abide by what Trump and the Republicans are saying and we're going to extend it. And guess what, y'all? From what I'm hearing, Donald Trump won that county. So they're trying to make them not win. Oh, by the way, that was in the biggest swing state in the United States of America, Pennsylvania, because what I believe, I believe that it's starting to look much, much more like Donald Trump is going to basically win uh, the swing states in the South, Georgia and North Carolina is what it's looking like. Um, I'm hearing that he's probably going to win Arizona and maybe perhaps an outside shot of Nevada. So what we're going to do on election night, family, we're going to sit here and we're going to see the three Rust Belt states, Michigan, Wisconsin. Pennsylvania. Oh, and by the way, some of these states are already saying, well, we don't know when we're going to actually have it tallied yet. Anytime they tell you they're going to have a hard time tallying it, that means they're having a hard time getting their shit together. That's really what it means. OK, I'm old enough to remember when you found out who won the election on election night. All these things where it takes a day and a week and a month to figure it out. That's typically BS. Word to the comedian, the great comedian, Paul Mooney. He said when something is um, a whack job and something ain't right, that means it's all over the damn place. When it's real, it's simple and direct. And our election family has not been simple and direct for quite some time. And this simple and direct things that we want, it always seems to lean towards the Democrats. Funny style stuff. So I believe we're going to be down to these swing states. And as we get close to these swing states, we're going to sit back on election night. And you're going to see Wisconsin. You're going to see Michigan and you're going to see Pennsylvania. And that's what it's going to boil down to. And I think we're going to sit there, family, and we're going to watch all three of these things go down one by one by one. And then you're going to end up seeing probably all eyes on Pennsylvania. And I believe that they're trying to paint the narrative that Kamala Harris made some miraculous comeback. Because remember, everything the Democrats do have to have some type of theater involved. All right. They have to sell you the Lord of the Rings. If a Republican wins, he just won. Uh, if a third party were ever to win, hey, they just won. If you ever see 
the Democrats win, they always have to make this look like some Disney movie. And you're going to hear that same media that has absolutely biased and slanted coverage. You're going to see all of them talk about, oh, my goodness, Kamala Harris was down three. Because remember, at this point that I'm referring to, Trump would have already won the swing states in the South and particularly the last two ones, perhaps out on the West Coast. So it's going to be those three Midwestern Rust Belt states. And you're going to watch and they're going to talk about how she walked him down. Same thing they said with Joe Biden. Wow. And they're going to talk about how it was miraculous. And then this for all my brothers and sisters in the room, because I know we got some brothers and sisters in here deep. We probably got some non brothers and sisters. But as Americans, this is what's happening. They're going to tell us how she did it on the backs of black people. They're going to say how this black woman defeated this evil white racist man because they've been the ones injecting all of the racial politics into this. Donald Trump comes out and says Latinos and black jobs are being taken by illegals and the black people got mad at that, right? The black Democrats were mad at black people losing their jobs to illegals. Okay, I guess. So you see what side they're on. And then they're going to run the narrative and here comes the theater. And you got to remember this as well, family. The biggest thing that they have working for them is that media, because the media, as they have slanted Donald Trump and his supporters, they've already got it in the bag. Because if Donald Trump says something about these elections having some type of interference or corruption, oh, they're just going to chalk it off. He's, he's crazy. There goes the convict again or the felony. They're going to dump that off on him. See, they already have slandered his name to the point. It doesn't really matter if something happens. Y'all, listen, 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 listen. Donald Trump had two attempts on his life and they still call him. <laughs> you think they're going to show him any sympathy if they <laughs> the election from him? No, that's the answer. The answer is no, 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 no. They called this man. <laughs> Literally after he had attempts on his life, they plan for keeps because you're talking about big stakes. All right. This ain't no county commission. You're talking about the president of the United States of America, the highest office in the world. All right. In the known universe, these people will get dirty to play. Matter of fact, every day you woke up this week is basically been another story trying to tell us how evil Trump is. Y'all tell me any time in American history where they put charges on an ex-president. Y'all tell me when. Let me tell you this. See, the problem is, is too many people seeing some of these bogus things that they were doing to Donald Trump. And we thought that was all just separate cases. No, they were not, y'all. Those were all chapters in the book of what culminates on Tuesday night. Don't look at them as all separate situations. All right. The attempts made on him, which, by the way, the news didn't really cover those. They covered that joke about Puerto Rico more than they covered the attempts on Donald Trump's life. Think about how cold these people are. All right. Think about that, y'all. They actually had all of these different situations on him. They propped up people to put charges on him. He navigated and beat all of that. And he's still right here a few days away from running and winning the presidency. You don't think that somebody's out there saying hell to the no? Hell no. They spent billions of dollars to try to get that man up out the paint. And you mean to tell me they just gonna say, ah, okay, that's cool, he won. You don't do all those things to somebody and then let them still win the presidency. Again, those weren't just separate situations, family. Those were all chapters in the book of how we can keep Donald Trump out of office. And then another thing that was made is that we have to remember, Kamala Harris is the poster child of the establishment, of the elites. She's not there to rock the boat. Remember, the presidency is about keeping things functioning. They want to keep things functioning in the United States of America. I'm kicking game today. Real game, y'all. It's about keeping things functioning and keeping things processing. Donald Trump, he upsets the apple cart. He's too much of a rogue. All right. Donald Trump comes into presidency and he carries out the Alien Enemies Act. He sends home millions of people. Somebody lost trillions of dollars. You think the system wants that to happen? Kamala Harris, she stays in office. And she brings in another $22 million and people get more than $100 trillion off of that. Who do you think the system wants? She is perfect for the elites. The elites would love Kamala Harris. And if you really want to go there and everybody talks about the system of supremacy, which we talk about and we break down and we dissect it, look at the system of supremacy and you tell me who would they prefer. Kamala Harris, who brings in all of these people to be elevated above us, that take all the resources away from average everyday Americans. Also, she gives money to Ukraine and whoever else comes over here or Donald Trump, who we had no wars under. Donald Trump, who's not for people coming over here and draining the resources of average everyday proletarian working class Americans. Which one do you think the system wants? 
They'd rather have it functioning the way it's functioning right now because they never expected him to beat those charges. They never expected that, y'all. That was meant to derail him. Let's be real, y'all. You think they give a damn about a porn star? How come George W. Bush ain't in jail since they got morality so damn much? George W. Bush and Dick Cheney, they said that there was the mass destruction in Iraq and Afghanistan. They didn't find a firecracker. And them folks ain't got one day in jail. None. Condoleezza Rice, none. Donald Rumsfeld, none. So now all of a sudden, they want to start getting morality now. Don't talk to me that this thing is just real and it's a coincidence and it's an accident. You do not put charges on a sitting or an ex-president unless you're trying to keep them from attaining some very funny style things going on in the United States of America, y'all. And it is fixing to culminate here in the next few days. Brothers and sisters been called. Out. We've been saying it since day one because they try to dump all this on us. See, there's a saying, shout out to Mumi Abu Jamal. He said it best. He said, those people who feel it more, know it more. And we know what they trying to do. And how do we know the most, y'all? It's because they've been trying to dump all of this Trump boogeyman stuff on us first. People need to listen to foundational black Americans. We got the game. And I'm breaking it down right now. A lot of people going to say too big to rig and all these other things, but they're not going to have the facts behind it. The reason why I can sit here and break down all these facts and you guys see it every single goddamn day is because they've been trying to dump this on us. We know there were some fraudulent charges on Donald Trump because they use a bunch of black faces in high places to do it. And they were talking about how it was black people who were going to bring him down. Every time the Democrats try to carry out a falsified political agenda, they use black people to do it. They did not expect for black Americans to not fall for that one. We didn't bite that apple, y'all. We was like, hell no. Hell no. Because remember, they were trying to tell us that Fannie Willis and Alvin Bragg, they were representing all of us. And they were trying to say, oh, my God, it's going to be amazing that black people were tired of this criminal Donald Trump. Man, we didn't really go for that. Then they tried to hit us with the Central Park Five stuff. Y'all remember back in the day, the Central Park Five, which, by the way, Donald Trump at the time was a Democrat. And it was the Democratic establishment who locked those guys up. They still tell that lie. Once again, we know what's happening because every single thing that they've done, they did to us first. The illegals voting. Who was talking about that before us, y'all? We've been the ones on the bumper of these tethers and these illegals that get dropped off in our neighborhoods. We've been the ones exposing that first. That's why 90 percent of the time where you see illegals out here doing all types of things, it's usually a black person recording it. Y'all remember when that African guy and his whole bus got dropped off in Atlanta? Shout out to all my people in the A. That was the black man recording that. All that stuff going on in Chicago when them folks is out there getting turned up about these illegals. Them is black folks. The school where the little kids couldn't even play, um, I think it was football, little league games because they were moving into migrants. All my people in New York City, them is usually black folks on the corner. I'm not saying it's not happening to people across America of all different backgrounds. I'm just saying that black Americans were always the first ones. So we who feel it more, know it more. So we are the theoreticians of calling this out, the experts, the aficionados of talking about too big to rig because we understand they play this game with us every day. The rest of America may see this every four years. We see this every single day we wake up. So we have been the ones exposing it. What better time than now? What better people than us? There's about 10 heavyweights in the game and Black Alpha's one of them and I'm right in the middle. Because remember y'all, the main thing that's gonna stop them from doing this, calling it out. You have to expose it. That's what we've been doing. We've been G-checking, what I call it, regulating. You don't regulate, they get a clean slate and they do whatever they feel like doing. You have to expose it and call it out and put it on that big ass jumbotron, okay? We got to put it on that summer jam screen. I guess it's the autumn screen right now, but I don't give a damn if it was the winter screen. And in the meantime, in between time, like always, certified foundational black Americans, you can't hustle us because we invented the hustle. You can't hustle a hustler and that's what we do. Brother Sage, you there, brother? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Peace to the family. You got me good? Real, real good, brother. Go ahead and uh, elaborate on everything, fam, you want to touch on and, uh, you know, what you see going on with this whole charade. Oh, it's definitely hard to follow what you said, but I do want to bring to the attention in New York City, you do not have to be a citizen in order to vote. And that's a problem. Uh, New Yorkers, I am a big advocate for the couch, but, and I won't go as far as saying vote for the clan left or the clan right. But I would say that you need to be active in this election in New York City. They have different proposals on the ballots that I think that my New Yorkers should look into and vote no to. Specifically, uh, proposal one that will give the illegal immigrants basically citizenship and it'll give them citizen rights and they'll be able to receive benefits that they should not be receiving. 
um, that's something that we specifically, the f foundational black community, should stand against. We should stand against that, and I believe that's proposition number one, if I'm not too mistaken. Um, me, I, Sage, I have not voted as of yet, but I do think that that's something that's important that we probably should lend our voice to. If you don't want to vote for the president, that's fine. I don't advocate for either or, but because no one's given us direct benefit, so I stand on what I've said throughout the years. Um, but I would say this, watch out, because again, someone brought up a great point. If we do not represent ourselves, if we do not cast the ballot, like my brother said, it's too big to rig. But what I worry is that if we do not cast a ballot, will they cast it for us? Now, that's the question that we all should ask ourselves. You don't want them to cast your ballot for you. Um, and, and, you know, in this country, you have to watch it. Um, there's no glitches in the system. There, there should be no glitches at all. All right. This isn't call of duty. OK, seriously, this isn't a video game. There should not be any glitches when it comes to our elections. So. um I would say definitely get involved. This is not the time to be lazy. No one is saying that you have to vote for Trump or Kamala, whatever the, whatever she wants to call herself on a th Tuesday. But what I would say is that look at the different proposals in your area and see that. Make sure it benefits you. If it does not benefit you, then do not vote for it. If you do decide to vote, make sure you vote your agenda. Make sure that you're getting something in return for your vote. Everyone's vote should be up for sale. No one should be, specifically Black people, we should not be locked down to any specific party. Make these parties work for you and then vote accordingly. And if you have not learned something for the last three years or so, you learned that. This is not, I understand this is we're getting into the 11th hour. This is not the time to be all afraid and shaky. This is not the scare time. And with that, I'm going to Appreciate that, brother. Good point. You you brought up something I forgot. Damn, I put about 300 receipts on the table and forgot that one. Good point right there. And we're going to get to the hands. Anybody want to come up? Come on up. Y'all know how we do. Um, Good point. All right. Grandpa is voting in 2020 and grandpa passed away in 1987. Really? There ain't no glitches out here, y'all. America has jets that can do backflips. Your voting box and your voting machine works properly. And I got those numbers that I was speaking about. Let me go ahead and say that. Check this out, you guys. This is what it is in terms of the news coverage, okay? Statistics have proven and it's been broke down is that Donald Trump in this election cycle has received 85% negative coverage. Kamala Harris has received 78% positive coverage. You don't think there's a game plan at that, family? You think that's an accident or coincidence? And I'm going to keep going back to those terms because what they're trying to tell you guys is that the immigration crisis is an accident. All right. This falsified news coverage is an accident. And who knows? We can't figure it out. This is what you're dealing with, you guys. This is what you're dealing with. Remember, black Americans, we got to be proactive on all this. Gone are the days where we just sit in the corner and we say, man, what they going to do any damn way? Man, I don't know. We're being proactive. Y'all know I've always been talking about this movement. And I'm talking about the certified foundational black American grassroots. We got to go platinum. We got to go to the mainstream. And you go there by us having these discussions, not just a red or blue Democrat or Republican. I'm talking about actual factual policies that my brother Sage was just talking about. All of those initiatives and referendums that are on these ballots, we're moving into now having a political discourse that is very, very highly intelligent, highly intelligent. And we're doing it by having these conversations. All that, you know, ignorant, wait, the illiterate folks who don't know what they're talking about, we kind of got them out the room. Because y'all know there's been a thing that plagued us where folks have no idea what the hell they're talking about, but they talk the loudest. Now the intelligent people are having the best conversations and we're speaking the loudest. So we are going to represent the factual, actual thing. Because remember, you guys, they're always telling us to stand on some type of principle and to be the better person. Well, now they're going to have to be the better people when it comes to election night. If not, they will be fully exposed. Let's go to the speakers. Um, I, I see your hand up. I cannot pronounce it. Uh, Doberman, is that what it is? Doberman like the dog. Happy Friday from Atlanta, everybody. Appreciate the Mike Black Alpha spot on, dropping facts, bringing receipts. Well said to Sage. Thanks for the invite, Steph. Uh, two quick things I wanted to point out for those that aren't aware. I put it down in the bubble. Protect the vote.com is one website you can go to to report anything that's going on funny and also elon has a group on uh x here that immediately puts it out it's election integrity community check out both of those um regardless of how you vote let's just make sure that we do vote and that our voices are heard because i agree with i think it was sage 
You don't want somebody else casting the vote for you. Show up and do it. Have a great Friday. Appreciate that. I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. We got to be poll watchers, y'all. I want everybody to think about the policies of all of the Democrats within the last, I'd say, 12 years. But let's just say, think about the policies of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris from inflation to the immigration invasion. The people who are doing all of these nefarious things with the election process, they want that to continue because that's why they promote them. You promote whose policies you want. It ain't that deep. Once again, it ain't rocket science, y'all. They promote these people, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, and their policies because they want to continue their policies. Well, those policies just happen to really strangle the average everyday American across all racial spectrums. So you see the difference on how they're promoting it and the way they're acting. I believe that the average everyday American really has their eyes up and they really are not buying what they're selling us. Let's go back to the hands. Juicy genius. It's all on you, sister. Hey, can I get a thumbs up to make sure the audio is good in the space? You guys can hear me okay? I, okay, great. I got you good. So much. Awesome. Uh, shout out to the host. Thanks for hosting the space. Uh, peace and power to all the descendants in the room as well. Um, yesterday, I had an opportunity to stop by one of the uh, Trump campaign uh, offices uh, where the volunteers uh, meet up at, where they go and get all of the canvassing materials, where there's phone baking going on, um, different things like that. Um, and Judge Joe Brown pulled up as well as Congressman Byron Donalds, because there's a lot of things going on on the grounds. I actually went to a polling location today, and it is heavily covered with Democratic polling volunteers. The energy is all Democratic. Everything from the person that greets you at the door to the process that you go in to get all the way through the process of voting. Um, so they're literally saying, hey, we're making sure there's no compromising and they're the ones with the hostility and facilitating the compromise. So I said, well, can I keep my ballot? Can I make a copy of this? Can I print this? I need to make sure that if something happens with my vote, I know what I typed in and typed what I selected. Um, is I have proof and receipt. You basically take everything. What I put electronically and digitally, as well as what I printed out, I don't. I don't get to walk away with anything. One of the poll people took my phones. I have three phones. Why? Because I'm in communications. I'm in multimedia. Uh, I have a personal phone. I have two businesses. So she took all my phones. I said, "Well, it doesn't say the sign says you can't record. It didn't say I couldn't have my phone." She said, "Well, you can't have your." I said, "Look at the sign, ma'am, on the wall. The wall it says no filming, no recording." It doesn't say I can't bring my phone. It's like, well, you um you're supposed to put in your purse. I said, I don't have a purse. I don't ha I don't carry purses. I don't like purses. So you you so so is this the issue of my phone? Because I can power the phone off. And she was like, No, you're not supposed to. I said, here, hold my phones. I just wanted you guys to document and journal everything. If you do decide to get up and go cast a vote, work a polling location, um, uh, attend an event or anything, journal everything because citizen journalism is how we're going to define what happens step by step from the early voting all the way up into post-election day. So I just wanted to put that in. Uh, peace and power to everybody in the space. Shout out to you at Black Alpha again. And um, you guys be blessed. Enjoy your weekend. Appreciate you, sister. Much respect, much respect, much respect. Wow, y'all. It keeps adding. It keeps adding. Remember, if we don't have these discussions, they don't talk about this. So that's a very prevalent point that we just heard right there from our sister. That's going on down here in Georgia, you know, the great state of Georgia, my home. Um, and it's going on across the country, all across the country. I'm going to go ahead and put this out. We mentioned what Donald Trump had spoke about, how at the voter places, and that's one of the key places, fam. All of these little people out there at these voter places, they're typically Democrats. Let's be honest with you. And they put these people in position of power and these people go ahead and they facilitate half of this nonsense. So that's what goes on. They're just going to say, oh, it's a lie. Donald Trump is crazy. He's a felon anyway. His supporters are garbage because remember, Joe Biden called him garbage. And then with black folks, they're going to say, oh, there goes those crazy FBAs again. They already have the slander tactics and they use it as a scapegoat. 
That's what they've been doing. They've been using it as a scapegoat and they're going to continuously pull that out. So this is why we point to Pennsylvania where a judge confirmed it. And by the way, a judge confirmed that there was some type of funny style stuff going on at a voting location in Pennsylvania and the news ain't spoke about it one time. I haven't heard it on the news. This is monumental. That is a massive breakthrough. The fact that the judge must have saw something. What the judge see, y'all? The citizen said that they were being turned away by the people that work at these voter places. Same thing our sister Juicy Genius was just referring to. It's the same exact thing. So if the judge sees the same thing that we're all seeing, shouldn't this be breaking news? Or are you still talking about a comedian's joke? Y'all know who the damn news and the whole damn system wants to win. And that's why you're getting that slanted news coverage. Remember that, y'all. Let's go to the hands, though. Sage, go ahead, brother. You want to elaborate? Then we'll get to the other speakers. There's more than, well, maybe not 22 million, but there's definitely more than 22,000 in New York alone. There's probably more than 22,000 in Manhattan alone. So I don't know exactly where they're pulling these numbers out of. But again, family, don't believe everything. When did we become so trusting of the news when did we as black people become so accepting of what they tell us do your own research family and this is a lot deeper than just what i can reiterate or black alpha can say on the stage here we're talking about millions that are going to multiply if they invite these people over here all these people are going to do is have children. These people may not be citizens today. No, 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 no. It's not about that. Like my brother Black always points out, forget Project 25, whatever the hell that's supposed to be. Worry about Project 50, 2050, where these people that are coming here illegally have children and their children will eventually have children and they're going to outnumber us, which will render our vote non-existent. So if you think that, like Brother Claude Anderson says, if we go from second place, it will not imagine if we go to third and fourth. So again, um, whatever you can do in your section, your town to implement any laws that would help you out, you do that. Everyone is responsible for themselves. Don't look at some superhero because that superhero is not coming. No one is above reproach and everyone is responsible for handling their own business. We're not running anywhere. We're not going anywhere. None of that's going to happen. So they're going to try to push and tell you, hey, you know, either vote for Kamala or don't vote at all. And and there's not just two options here. You make as much options as you want to make. You don't have to vote for her. Hell, you can vote for the Green Party. I don't give a damn. But you have to watch them, family, because so you understand, I, I don't care about them losing. If we constantly lose, what the hell are we getting out of these elections? And with that, I'm going to throw it to Curtis Price. You walk on stage first. It's on you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yes. How you doing? No, um, no I just want to say, man, you know, I, you know, I thank y'all, man, so much, man, because, you know, I, I'm 64 years old and I never really voted in, in my life because I lost all hope and faith in the United States a long time ago, man, you know, because I'm a, I'm a baby boom, baby, I born 1960, man, and I just, I just thank God for y'all, man, and just, you know, I, I seen the, the writing on the wall from the beginning, man, just, you know, and just keep speaking the truth, man, because the truth, man, will, will always travel through man so i i just want to say thank thank all your brothers and sisters just just keep keep speaking the truth man because the truth will always break through okay much respect to you brother thank you uh let's go to angelique it's on you i'm sorry i was like in the car and i just pulled up to my house i'm sorry about that can you hear me okay yeah she loud and clear okay thank you um i was gonna say something about the first time i started hearing about the finesse they the first thing that i heard like all these others it started snowballing with the ballot boxes being burned people's votes getting changed but the first thing i remember hearing back i don't know if everybody remembers this probably about it was about the time when kamala harris jumped in the they they made her the nominee all of a sudden their pennsylvania said they said that they were saying that they were not going to be able to have same-day election results. It's like they got out in front of it. 
it was like, because we know it's one of those swing states or one of those states that you look at to is this one of those deciding states for the president? It's like they it's like they knew like they were already setting it up. Let's go ahead and just let them know we're going to finesse right away. And then you started hearing about the other things. And I don't know if anybody else had remembered that. And I'll I'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you, sister. One hundred percent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely right, y'all. Absolutely right. And let me add something that our sister just said. I want to further take it another you know level. You're right. We got to think about the propaganda. See, what I've been doing the last few days, I've been thinking about the propaganda that they're going to already spew ahead of time. All right. I want all this to be documented. Why I want to have this space family. I want it to be documented in stone so the world knows that we called it, we forecast it, and we predicted it ahead of damn time. So they can't come and say that we just made it up. It was some down. Do every single step, every single trick, every single maneuver is documented. My words right now are in stone. We pumping the signal to the stratosphere so they hear it. So what they're going to do, family, things like it was that joke. That joke really turned people around. They said, we're tired of Donald Trump's racism. We just can't tolerate it. This was the American people taking a stand that will no longer tolerate this type of racism. Because remember, every time the Democrats win, it's always some theater. All right. When Joe Biden won, remember the theater then? And they were saying that black folks stopped Donald Trump's evil regime. Y'all remember all of this stuff. These are the things I want you guys right now, everybody to a man and to a woman. Think about the propaganda that they're going to spew on Tuesday. Think about the story. I want you to think about what you're going to read in the headlines and all the newspapers and all the media outlets of what you're going to see. What do y'all think it's going to be? I can already see it's going to be the joke. They're going to say folks just want Donald Trump to go away. Kamala Harris is a strong black woman and black folks going to save the election again. I'm already in my mind visualizing like it's happening right now. Every single fraudulent story that they're going to try to pump off into the American public. And the same news that gives Donald Trump 85 percent of negative coverage and Kamala Harris 80 percent of positive coverage are going to be the ones who run these headlines. And it's going to be something out of the Lord of the Rings, y'all. I'm telling you right now. So I want everybody to remember that. I want to keep that in mind and let's keep these things going. Uh, I see a geopolitical focus. You don't have your hand up, but you've been here first. Go ahead. Hi. Um, so I just want to comment on this subject. Um, I think that the Democrats every single year, they're relying more and more on immigrant voters. They want to be able to maintain political power by having all these immigrants vote for them. They are disrespecting Americans in every single way, whether it's white, black or otherwise, as to the utmost extent that they can. Democrats are saying to Americans, we don't need you. You're so st you're so worthless. We can just import these immigrants from all these other countries. You know, there's 198 countries in the world. And they're like, yeah, let's just import immigrants from all these other countries. They will definitely vote for us. We don't need you guys. We think you guys are so st that you will vote for us anyway, that when we tell you a platitude and we try to get you emotionally involved, you will vote for us. If we tell you, you know, oh, racism or uh, feminism or whatever, then you will vote for us no matter what. And so Democrats think that their own voter base is so s that no matter what they do, their own vo voter base will always support them at the end of the day. And I think that if Americans want an America in the future that is actually occupied by Americans, white, black, Hispanic, Asian, or otherwise, then we should all be voting for Trump because, you know, beyond that, if it's Kamala, it's just going to be more of the same thing. More and more immigrants will be imported into America. Less and less Americans, their votes will matter less and less. Um, and, they, and the Democrats will rely on immigrants for their votes. And our country will get worse and worse. And there will be more and more problems. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Absolutely. That's exactly what the Democrats are planning to do. Um, they don't really care about reality. This is what I'm trying to stress to everybody. The Democrats don't care about reality at all. Literally, they tell us that the illegal migrant invasion is not happening. Think about it. And I'm going to be real. I don't believe that the immigration invasion migrant crisis has been covered at all. It's literally the top one to two issues in the American atmosphere, stratosphere, and it doesn't get covered. Kamala does all these interviews and it doesn't even come up once. I would get it if it came up one time. We're talking about one time. It doesn't even come up one time. They literally asking her what she had for lunch more than they're asking her about the immigration invasion. And then when it does come up, she blames Trump. Democratic voters think that Donald Trump started the migration invasion. 
Democratic voters think that he's responsible for inflation. They say that Donald Trump that bill that would incentivize 11 million, 20 million people to stay. When Donald Trump was a private citizen, he's not even in office. And these people literally, genuinely, sincerely believe it. Facts don't matter. We have to get to the point where we got to realize to a lot of people, facts just don't matter. They have that Democratic loyalist mentality, and it's Democrats over everything. And this is what 85% of boogeyman news coverage gets you when it comes to Donald Trump. I sit back sometimes, and I look at the way that they talk about him. They talk about Donald Trump like he's Darth Vader. They might as well just play goddamn Star Wars music in the background. They literally act like every single thing that's happened in the United States of America is because of Donald Trump. And I'm not for calling somebody like that. All right. Imagine if somebody were to call Joe Biden or Kamala Harris. Imagine that black Americans have been saying that Kamala Harris ain't a black woman and they act like literally we started a war when we say that. Oh, it's so appalling. I can't believe you said this. How dare you say that? And the facts prove that she's not a black woman, but they treat us like we just came out of uh, an insane asylum for saying that. Like they can't fathom that this non-black woman is not really black. You telling me that going to a HBCU does not make you black? It does not make you black. Neither does washing your collie greens in the bathtub. Okay. Oh. Oh. Neither does cackling in every interview. Neither. <laughs> Let's not forget the cackling. But we get criminalized for questioning, or excuse me, let me rephrase that. We get criminalized for exposing her lack of blackness. But they get to call somebody fake outrage that's all they have and they use it on the backs of everybody out here in america as an american family that is to the point where it's so hyperbolic and anybody who sits there and votes for that literally is voting against the american public and this is why we've been exposing that to the maximum and this is why we say if somebody can call 250 million people garbage or they can say and remember there's a lot of black folks who are voting for trump so they call in black folks garbage too all right. And even if you didn't vote for Trump, who the hell is Joe Biden to call anybody garbage? And then they walked it back and they wouldn't even admit that that was happening. All they do is lie, lie, lie. And they have fake outrage. They are at this moment. And I'm talking about their policies. They are opposition to the American public. And if you can call people Nazis in the United States of America, but we can't expose her for being a cosplaying woman then we're going to have to go to the table. We're going to rip up the rules and we're going to go ahead and write some new ones. And the new ones that we write are going to be the way we say so, because apparently that's how they're playing the game. Sage, I lost who's next, brother. I don't know if you got track of it. Yeah, so yes. Boykins is next. Boykins, you're next. Hi, good afternoon. Hi, Black Alpha. Hi, Sage. Greetings to all the speakers and everyone listening in the room. I'd like to take the time out and say this up front, and I don't care who's listening. The money's behind Trump, period, in a discussion. All the Democrats have is the finesse. The people who run this country know that Kamala is nothing more than a prop. She's a proxy, and the Democrats put all of that money into her candidacy because the Democrats really are finished at the state level, at the congressional level. They got wiped out in 18 and a lot of congressional districts simply because of the losing strategy. They did not engage young adults. The young adults, they overlooked about a lot of black men and women. The same people the Democrats deliberately ignored back there in 12 and 16 are the adults, many have families and kids, that's making them pay at the ballot box. Preliminary polling in my state, which is deep blue, it's not looking good for Harris. With the popular vote, it is split between Harris and one of the third parties in this state. And as far as electors are concerned, they're worried about this state in which I live, even though it's not considered a swing state, it's considered a safe state. They're afraid two of the congressional representatives are not going to come back. And these are two big Democrats. Um, 
when I say big Democrats, I mean, as far as fundraising is concerned, as far as uh, towing the line with Democrat policy, they may not they may not win their congressional races. And there's some uh, moderate Republicans that are coming in and giving them hell. And that's just in my state alone. Uh, we've got some third party candidates here. Um, I'm telling you, the Democrats are not looking good. And if they try to finesse, the backlash is going to come, of course, from us. OK, foundational black Americans, we've been calling this for well over a decade now. The backlash they fear coming from us is we will check out of the system completely. That is financially. That is with our jobs. That is with our votes completely check out of the system. And when we do that, the system eventually collapses on itself because a lot of things are tethered onto us. OK, if we check out of the system, they can't run their migrant scams and schemes and programs. We check out of the system. The tethers can't run anything other than back home. OK, so when the Democrats say, all right, we got this. You know, and they're bold with it. What they're signaling to the voters is we know that you guys are the problem and have always been the problem. You just don't care. So all of those hollow promises and everything. Now we see you right out in the open. Remember, folks who know their history, the Democrats are notorious. They've got a long history going after other political candidates. This is nothing new. We know that from our history. Study what happened um, in the late 19th to the early 20th century. So what's a national election? OK, what is an, a, a national election? All they're trying to do is push through their same failed programs and policies. And you know what? And I'm just going to tell you this right now. The people who care about this country and who will fight tooth and nail to protect regular folks and the regular citizens, they're not going to stand for this. They're not. If they think that people are just going to sit back and be quiet and allow this to go on. No, it's not. So I, I'm just going to uh, I'll be waiting and I'm watching and. Let's let's go on. Let's get it started. Appreciate you, my sister. Very, very great insight. Thank you very much for that. I'm glad you uh, spoke on that because I want to hear what's going on throughout the whole country, all the 50 states. This is one time family where all of the American public can sit here and hold these people to task because what they're not going to do, they're not going to start wars in our name. Remember, you guys, they give away billions of dollars to illegals and billions of dollars to Ukraine and all these other countries off the backs of us. OK, that's our money that they give away. You're not going to give away money that belongs to taxpaying American citizens. So this is why we've been absolutely exposing it. And we're going to continue to expose it as American society, because that type of cosplay that type of rigging the system is absolutely detrimental to the same things that they preach to us. So if we were to come out here and have any type of voice. Now is the time. So speak loud, speak proud on the Black Alpha Network. OK, on Tuesday night, seven o'clock, we're going to have a marathon. So we got 100, almost 200 people in here right now. Go to the Jumbotron It's right up there in the top. Hit it and make sure that you subscribe right now to the Black Alpha Network. We're going live tonight and we're going to have a deep dive and we're going to take it even further tonight. We're going to have the same conversation. We're going to further. So y'all make sure y'all tap in tonight at seven o'clock. We're going to go all the way in and make sure you subscribe to the Black Alpha Network because we're going to have the best election coverage. It's not going to be MSNBC or CNN. It's not going to be ABC. It's not going to be slanted 152 percent to how great Kamala Harris is. No, it's going to be facts. We're going to have the call up. We're going to have everybody call on so we can talk about what's going on throughout the country and everybody can converse so we can keep our eyes on these people too big to rig. Go ahead, Brother Sage. No, 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 no. Let's get to the hands because um, these people have been waiting for such a long time. So um, who's next? Um, Erica? Erica, Hi. you're next? Yes. Hi. This is my first time sharing on a space. But um, I just wanted to say kind of to point on what he said about Joe Biden when he's talking about garbage. He was talking to all Americans that supported Trump, which includes Puerto Ricans. So that's a point. And then also, um, Kamala, I don't think she can talk on the border because... 
what she's doing aligns exactly with like the international compact for refugee resettlement that was out in 2019 and is also in a line with uh, um, future cities that I think it's called the C41 um, future cities. Um, and it goes over, I mean, the resettlement of the refugees is part of their plan. And I think that the American people really need just to realize that this isn't necessarily a Republican versus Democrat thing, which they're trying to make it be or a racial thing. It's really we the people versus the elite that are trying to take over our country. And that's about it. That's all. If I may push back on on what Erica said, I live in a sanctuary city and the city is part of the C-41. One of the biggest problems we're getting with this globalization is the fact that my state is a border state and we've got a congressional representative, several state legislators who are undermining the existing laws to get people settled. They're taking taxpayer resources to settle these people. This is more than just a global system. This is about an erase and replace strategy specifically done by who's in power. The Democrats are in power right now, so they're the ones that's going to get the smoke. They're the ones that's responsible for this simply because the Democrats are also in power in a lot of cities where there's majority black populations. Now, my city doesn't have a majority black population. However, there is significant wealth. And that's what they're using, the existing wealth and tax bases that have been put in place for the past 55, 60 years because of the people who voted the same way for the past 55, 60 years, whether you're a Democrat or Republican. So they're using that to pass the buck off to taxpayers, everybody that's listening here, working folks, everybody that's listening right now. And they're trying to say, well, this is the way it is. No, it's not the way it is. You're not gonna take our votes. You're not gonna take our tax dollars. One of the problems is, the, what is it? The New Deal for New Americans Act of 2023. Grace Maine and Pramila Brea Paul introduced that in the House in 2023. The whole thing about the New Deal for New Americans, I forgot the House resolution, I think it's 1623. The thing with the New Deal for New Americans is they're taking tax dollars to set up social services programs for foreign nationals. Not people who have citizenship, but for foreign nationals. In other words, your state legislators working in conjunction with your congressional leaders are taking your tax dollars and giving it to foreign nationals, taking food out of your children and your grandchildren's mouth, taking away their standard of living and giving it to people. They're not putting money back into the system. They're getting their money and they're moving on to the next stage. Uh, no, you're absolutely right. I think actually you coincided with what Erica was saying a little bit because um, it is an issue in terms of illegal immigration. We broke this down on the Black Alpha Network about the IOM, Miles for Migrants. We broke it all the way down. It goes to the highest levels. That's why in Europe right now, Europe wants to get away uh, from the European Union because just absolute open borders. You got to understand, when you start talking about democratic policies in terms of immigration, they know no borders. They are literally borderless people. There's no nation. I remember Donald Trump said a long time ago, he said, listen, we're going to have borders or we're not. And it's simple as that. You're either going to have border or you're not. So either you have a border, OK, or you don't. And it is not a issue in terms of migrants coming in here. That's not something that, you know, you're a bad person for not agreeing with someone coming into this country. Because let's be honest with you, the person who comes into the United States of America, that old person fleeing from persecution, that is lie. That's not happening. People are coming in with three piece suits on cell phones. They got goddamn pagers and beepers. I don't even know if they got them anymore. But damn it, they got the 2030 ones. All right. They got PlayStations. These are very, very well to do individuals. And if you notice the same manipulative tactics that the news uses where they show you, oh, look at these poor people coming in from Mexico. I don't see that a lot. I see the news points that because remember, every time the news talks about a caravan, which, by the way, you'll see these caravans. Right. And they'll say literally there's 10, 15000 people walking through uh, South America on their way here. And then out of nowhere, it disappears. You don't ever see it. You always see these people walking to America. But then they don't show you when they get to America. Y'all notice that now. 
Notice that because every time you see them, then they don't show you the guy who just was flown in here from Africa or from India or from China. Chinese migrants are the second highest migrants that are coming in to the United States of America. OK, you have folks literally from India. You have African people. And Donald Trump has mentioned this before. But guess what happened when he mentioned it? The news said, oh, how can he say something so evil and bad? The Donald Trump is the boogeyman scapegoat is over with. All right. Because basically they have created this narrative that no matter what Donald Trump says, even if he's telling you something that you see with your own eyes, the news is going to say if Donald Trump said it, it ain't true. If Kamala Harris says it, then it is true. Now, when you look at average everyday American citizens, I know for a fact that there's people who came home from Vietnam and they're in the streets sleeping. I know folks who came home from Afghanistan and Iraq and they're sleeping in the streets. Go to Washington, D.C., go to New York. You see average everyday American people sleeping outside in the cold and a migrant is in a five star luxury hotel with an e-bike and with thirteen thousand dollars on their EBT cards. How are they getting access and resources as non-American citizens that American citizens are not even eligible for, that war veterans are not eligible for? A country that has American citizens homeless and starving is absolutely pathetic when that same country has migrants coming here and then the damn borders are Kamala Harris. She sits down and acts like she wasn't in control of all that. If I was interviewing Kamala Harris, first question going to be about immigration, second, third, fourth, fifth going to be about immigration, and we're not going to cackle our way through the interview until she answers it directly. And that's not what you get with the news. And remember, family, I actually have a homeless program. We deal with homeless people all the time. We give these people food and everything. But guess what? They would be able to get it in the United States, but America would rather give it to immigrants. Same way they gave FEMA money to immigrants. And this all goes back to the Democratic establishment. And it shows you in this election is president, then migrants ain't coming over here in a five star luxury hotel. And perhaps we can start doing something about homeless war vets or just homeless Americans in general. You want to be American first. Voting Democrat is not the way to go because they've proven by their policies, not by rhetoric, not by happenstance, by their actual factual policies. They've proven that it's Migrants over everybody, including American citizens. All right, let's keep it moving. Uh, Juicy Genius, I know you had your hand up. So, Hey, I just wanted to, I, I forgot something in my original submission. Um, I pinned a tweet to the Jumbotron uh, temporarily because I wanted the, uh, the family in the space to watch the video of the Puerto Rican voter who stated that she was still voting for Trump um, uh, despite of what the comments that was made by the comedian um, at the Madison Square Garden uh, rally event. And she, what she actually stated was that because of his comments about Puerto Rico, she was made aware that there was an environmental crisis happening in Puerto Rico that funding actually went to, as she began to do investigation and research, funding from multiple nations went to Puerto Rico to assist them with their environmental waste management issue. The, you know, the Puerto Rican government was taking the funding and pocketing and using for other things instead of what it was intended for, which was to clean up the mess. And so that's what you know, even though it was a joke, but it was really talking about that there is a waste management crisis going on in Puerto Rico. And this Puerto Rican voter says, I did not allow that comment to deter my vote about where the nation is going. So I just wanted to put that in the jumbotron so you all can see that, that there's Puerto Ricans who are still voting for Trump. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm policy over party. Neither party is going to give us anything in regards to reparative legislation or, or reparations that are, that's lineage based in this election. Um, so I have to go down to my next priority. And so the immigration issue and our economy is what I'm voting for. So it had nothing to do with Trump, nothing to do with Republicans. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not committed to any party, but I have to think about the policies and where we're going so that we can continue this reparations fight. So I yield my mic. I'll go back down to listener. Thanks so much, Black Alpha. Yes, Juicy. I'm going to jump in there again. I'm from New York where there's a large population of Puerto Ricans, and I'm here to tell you they are still voting for Trump. Go ahead, Black Alpha. I'm glad you said that, family. So wait a minute. Again, is that reality? 
versus what the Democrats sell us in fantasy? Is that trusting our own eyes and it doesn't look like anything you see on mainstream media? Absolutely. Again, they did that as fake outrage. That was some of the biggest fake outrage you've seen. All this week, I've woke up to fake outrage stories because all the Democrats have is playing emotions and pitting Americans against Americans so they can get you to vote. And then once they do that, then they give all your money and your energy to the Ukrainians or whoever else. This is just what they do. This has been the playbook of the Democratic establishment. And this is why they've been really, really trying to keep people away from uh, Donald Trump, because they understand if Donald Trump becomes the president of the United States of America, a lot of that fake outrage they do will not be accessible. But let's keep the hands flowing and going. Uh, I think it's PFI Ukraine. It's on you. Hey, good evening uh, from Canada, uh, from Ukraine. I'm a Canadian Italian, and uh, you know I don't think there's such a thing as uh, white people. Honestly, I'm a, I'm a tan individual myself, and uh, everyone's pink. You know, we can tan. We got melanated skin. So that that aside, I just want to say that uh, I'm really concerned about what's going on in the U.S. You know, I worked for Elections Canada, federal, provincial, and municipal elections. And seeing ballot boxes burn in the U.S. is really shocking. Canada, we need we need the U.S. to be strong, strong ally. We need the, the U.S. to be uh, a leader in world ethics. And I think I, I want to see, and I think the world wants to see, U.S. elect the more ethical candidate. You know, if if the U.S. is going to claim to be the moral uh, standard and have the moral high ground in the world, we want to have the world leader be ethical. Right. And uh, what you were saying about the uh, money going to Ukraine, it actually stimulates the U.S. economy to send expiring. It creates jobs and uh, a lot of money is actually going to. So if Ukraine had the lobby, Ukraine wouldn't be begging for money from from anyone because they would just they would just have the lobby controlling the U.S. like Israel does. And uh, uh, that's pretty much basically what I had to say. But thanks for having the space. And I'm pro democracy. PFI Ukraine is an NGO. We're a non non governmental, non profit organization. Okay, that's enough. Um, let me go ahead and tell everybody it does not stimulate the economy to give money to Ukraine. All right, that's absolute BS. All right, and if you're voting for Kamala Harris so you continue to get billions of dollars from the American citizens, just come and tell us. All right, just just come and say it. No, yeah, and, and that that guy who was just speaking, he supports Kamala Harris 100. percent That guy was just lying. He completely yeah, wanted, supports Kamala Harris. I wanted, I wanted to ask him who he supports. Because, look, sir, I don't know if you're new to you know, our spaces, sir, but you can, you, can, you can be yourself. You can come on out. That's fine. But one thing you're not going to do is lie. We're not in favor of sending any money to Ukraine, any money to... We're not in favor of any of that, sir. So, um, yeah, no. And you're in Canada, sir. So why are you worried about our politics over here? You're in no, yeah, you're, you're talking about PFI Ukraine, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. PFI Ukraine, that guy that just yeah, spoke. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to tell you why. Because the Democrats have made it clear. That right there, everyone who's listening, I'm glad he called in because I, I knew what he was saying was BS from the giddy up. I knew the camouflage he was wearing was, you know, camouflage. I knew what he was really getting at. That right there is your typical Democrat policy beneficiary, all right? A person who comes into our space with Americans, we got a lot of different Americans from a lot of different backgrounds in here, and we all are in the United States of America. He is a Ukrainian in Canada saying that he cares about what goes on in America. Notice he tried to talk about ethics and he talked about an ethical code, right? What that really is, is the same thing Democrats do where they're trying to drum up some type of emotion to get us to go into our pocketbooks and write a check for people who don't deserve it. That's really what it is. And that is the result of the failed policies from Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. The very fact that they are no borders um, globalist who want everybody to come into America and we just share everything. That actually coincides identically with what I was speaking of in terms of World War veterans being homeless, why migrants come over here and they get all the resources and the benefits. There's only so many resources and benefits, okay? There's only so many. Put it this way. If there is three pieces of bread and we got to share it amongst 318 Americans, they just let in 22 million illegals. And then not to mention if... Kamala Harris wins, you're going to get another 22 million. And that's not to mention the 30, 40, 50 that were already here. So those three pieces of bread create a power vacuum, a resource vacuum. And let me tell you, everybody, they know this. 
They know this. And actually, let me go ahead and correct my own self. It's not failed policies. They only failed the American people. They succeeded with their own agenda. Kamala Harris did not fail anything in the United States of America at all. All right. Neither did Joe Biden. They came in here and they told us what it is. Remember, Joe Biden said we want to surge the border. That doesn't mean close the border. All right. Remember, Kamala Harris, she said that, you know, illegal immigration is a moral thing. So when you got people coming here on top of the Ukrainian situation, um, on top of every other person who comes here and gets the money, that is your average everyday Kamala Harris, Democrat, Joe Biden supporter. And that literally encapsulates why we as American people are looking at this election and we're saying, no, 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 no. We're not with sending our money to everybody else while we starve. OK, this is simple common sense. We're not with starting um, all these different conflicts in the name of the American people, but the American people suffer in the process. We're not with Julio or whoever coming over here, because remember, it's not just Julio. All right. It's every other person is Mr. Mutombo. Everybody, they all come over here. Every one of these people who come to the United States of America and they're elevated above us. That right there is what we're saying we're not for. And if this is a true country with a real democracy that they always wag their finger to us and say, oh, abide by the rules. How can they tell us that we have a system based on integrity when they're not showing any integrity? We have a system based on sincerity when they're not showing any sincerity. And if you think that the southern border is bad, wait until the next politician eventually comes and he says, let's just do away with the border. I mean, think about it. If you have a house and you have a door, and the door is broken and people just come in, eventually someone's going to say, just close the door and get rid of it. So that's what you're seeing. That's what we're watching. Let's continue to go through the hands and who we have here. Sorry, real quick, Black. Go ahead, brother. Are you, getting, are you getting paid by Russia? I have never received a check from Russia. Apparently, if you leave it up to the Democratic Party, Vladimir Putin pays off any single person that has never agreed with the Democrats. That, that's just what it is, okay? Oh, and remember this, everybody. Everything you see with your own eyes. Matter of fact, let me say this clear. Your eyes and your vision is misinformation. Remember that. Your eyes and your vision and your experiences is all misinformation. That goes to every single person in here. Russian bot and misinformation. I'm going to translate that for you. What that really means is you don't agree with the Democrats and you're That's what they're basically telling us. But let me get to my brother, Sir Funk. Let's keep it going. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> Y'all cracking me up here. Uh, Peace, power, and reparations to the family. Uh, I just wanted to put two quick hits in here. One, um, yeah, I'm going to vote. Uh, uh, I am not going to vote for either of the uh, either of the presidential, the two major presidential candidates. Uh, where I vote doesn't allow write-ins, so I can't do that either. And not that there's anybody that I would want to write in anyway, uh, except for maybe uh, Greg Marcel Dixon. But other than that. Uh, I am going to vote because, uh, one, uh, there are ballot initiatives that matter. So you want to pay attention to those. Uh, those those can affect your life and they're local. Uh, you want to do that if you. I mean, you know, uh, the couch. You know, if, as as far as as far as the chess strategy of couch, that works as well. But in my particular in my particular area, there is a ballot initiative that I care about or love. So I'm going to vote on that. The other thing that I'm voting, the other, the other reason that I'm voting is because, and someone brought this up in Tariq's space like a couple of nights ago, you might want to just show up and vote anyway, even if you're not going to vote for a candidate, have it registered that you showed up to vote. Uh, that way they can't automatically uh, uh, corral your vote to uh, corral your vote to vote for whatever candidate the election board or the local uh the local group in power would want you to vote for that, that is to say that you know ostensibly they wouldn't be able to put your vote in for kamala harris if they show if you don't show up they're going to uh take it as their vote to use as they see fit you see what i mean so that that way if you have if there's any chance that you might be able to prevent that that's what you might want to show up to vote for. And like I say, just vote for the ballot initiatives. Um, the other thing is, assuming that assuming that the okie doke doesn't take effect and Trump wins running away as he should. Uh, no, I'm not a fan of I'm not a fan of Trump either. But there is something there is something that I can see that we can push our foundational black agenda our, our foundational black American agenda forward. And that is simply him closing the borders 
that helps us. And if we can pile on to that and force him to end immigration, uh, end birthright citizenship, and basically, you know, end all immigration, legal and illegal, and start these deportations. If we can get him to do anything above and beyond simply closing the borders, then that's gravy. And that shows that we're thinking, we're thinking, you know, a couple of three steps ahead. We, like, like you say, the things that Donald Trump does, the, the things that Donald Trump has done uh, when he's been in office have not been of any negative effect to us. And I assume that that'll probably be the same uh, going forward as, you know, he's only going to be in office for four years. And in that time, we can use his stated, uh, his stated intent to close the border to our advantage. And that's, you know, that's, that's, and, and, and if we can stack on anything above and beyond that, meanwhile, we're grooming our grassroots to be uh, resolved to do the things that we need to do, which is, you know, black economic uplift uh, 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 and, and, protective, and, and protective laws that put us in the and to put us in the space where we can actually compete without having, you know, the, the change that we've had on our legs and on our ability to uh, be full American citizens and fully participate above and beyond what we have been for, you know, for, for our entire history in this country. And those are the two or three quick hits I wanted to put in there. Uh, keep doing what you're doing, Brother Alpha. And, you know, of course, I'll be listening to your space later today. And we'll see you on Election Day as well. Peace and power. Appreciate that, family. Absolutely. Once again, I want to go ahead and reset the room while we have everybody in here. We have laid out literally at least 30 to 40 different receipts. I'm talking about facts confirmed that there has been a lot of foul play already happening. Um, and they all seem, and I'm talking about 100% of them, to be beneficial to Kamala Harris. I asked this when the space first started. Out of all the election things that you see, how many of them have ever benefited Donald Trump and how many have ever benefited Kamala Harris or Joe Biden? It is clear. I have yet to see one that helps out Donald Trump. And I have to elaborate further as well. Donald Trump's been president before. We are actually out here right now acting like Donald Trump has never been the president. We know what a Donald Trump presidency looks like. And we know what a Kamala Harris presidency looks like because she and Joe Biden have the same policies. Remember, she told everybody she wouldn't do anything different than him. So we've seen it. And let's also remember this. Joe Biden is the president right now. There's two things out there, family, that they've been lying about. They make it look like we've never seen Donald Trump's presidency before. We have. And they make it look like Joe Biden is not the president right now. You would almost think that the president of the United States of America is Donald Trump. They make it look like Donald Trump's been president for eight years because they want to blame him for everything. So this is what we're speaking of in terms of the way they're moving and the way they're functioning. And that means every single American citizen is going to have to put the pressure on not just the Democrats, but I'm talking about the news media. Because remember, they take their orders from the top, the Democrats benefit, and then the news smooths it all the way out. So that's what we're going to have to continue to watch. Uh, I, um, I, I have something that I would like to say about this. Um, so basically what the Democrats are doing right now is they are trying to ensure that future generations will consistently vote for Democrats. That is their one hope right now. Their hope is that they import enough illegal immigrants that they will have a voter base for years to come that will steadily support them. Because the Democrats know, even if you're lying to American citizens every day, every election, every election cycle, every two years, every four years, they are going to eventually realize that you're lying to them. That is what the Democrats do. They lie to their base. They lie to uh, completely dif different demographics of people. They try to convince all of these people to vote for them. And then at the end of the day, the, the Democrats, Democrats, even though they promise a lot of things, they don't actually come up with any tangibles for anyone. Anyone. There are no tangibles for anyone. There are just words and platitudes. That's what the Democrats do. Democrats rely on the stup stupidity of voters in order to maintain power. And in order to interrupt that process from happening, people have to not vote for the Democrats. The Democrats do not care about America or American citizens, black, white, or otherwise. They care about their power and maintaining control of it. And that is all the Democrats care about. They are corrupt. They don't care. They don't care about you. They don't care about your family. 
And if you want a true change, then you should be voting for someone who says, we're going to shut down illegal immigration completely, like Donald Trump says. You shouldn't be voting for someone who says, well, I, I think we're all an important part of America and we just need to all contribute and we're just all good for the economy and we just all need to love each other. Like, that's what the Democrats lie to you about every single like. So that's all. Thank you. Um, can I say something? Hold on one second. One second. I got to get to some of these other hands and we're going we're gonna to spin it all the way back. Spin it all the way back. What I do see is this. What I do see is this. Immigration must be more of a problem than Kamala Harris the Democrats and the Joe Biden administration say because every single American is dealing with the after effects of this migrant crisis. And every single American is saying the same thing. Every single American is out here suffering and struggling in high inflation. While y'all notice inflation doesn't affect the migrants, you notice that, right? The migrants aren't being affected by that at all. So it shows everyone out here that we all must be seeing the same thing. And the only ones who aren't seeing it are the Democrats, their voters, the establishment, and the news media. Let me keep your hands going, though. Uh, Seppa, it's on you. Hey, thanks. Thanks, brother. Uh, shalom. But yeah, I'm, I'm right here in Pennsylvania. And let me tell you, um, I'm checking in from Pennsylvania, so I'm giving you a report, what I see with my own eyes. You know, me and my girl, we go all over Pennsylvania. Well, at least the eastern half of Pennsylvania, because she's from eastern Pennsylvania. So we see a lot of Trump everywhere, Trump paraphernalia, whether it's flags, signs, bumper stickers, you, you know, um, Pennsylvania, at least where I'm at, is heavy in is heavy with Trump. But let me tell you about how Pennsylvania works. Philadelphia is like Chicago and Illinois. It is completely separate. It's its own entity, you know, aside from Pennsylvania. The only thing that Philadelphia has to do with Pennsylvania is that it's geographically located in um, Pennsylvania. And how do I know this? Because I'm a strong two-way believer and um, activist. And Philadelphia has stricter two-way laws. Now, the whole thing with um the s it is real. I've shown my girl. And I think it is what you're talking about, because I moved here from Tennessee. So Tennessee and Kentucky, you know, they correlate a lot with each other on a whole lot of different fronts. And I, I was seeing that where the dude and then Kamala Harris lit up, you know, KD Harris, however, she lit up as blue, her 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 bar. So that's going on. And then there's there's some reports right here in Pennsylvania that people, I'm not gonna say my real name, but my name included has been included as you know, someone who's registered to vote. I'm not registered to vote in Pennsylvania or Tennessee. I'm from Texas. I was registered to vote there, but that registration had expired like 20 years ago. So the point that I'm making, it, you know, it feeds heavily into what you're talking about, what this space is about. They, they are to go ahead and um, pull a big finesse. Everybody watch out. If you can report and check in and, you know, give your take on what's going on, have receipts, or if you don't have receipts, report to someone immediately who could get back to one of the heavy hitters in the um, NBM, the new black media. So, you know, this stuff could go ahead and get put out there. Or if you have a phone, take a picture of it. And if you have a, tw a X account, but bring it here. Put your receipts right here. Reach out to somebody so, you know, or even make a space so this stuff could be exposed and it could be known. We need to stay on their bumpers and not land there, brother. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Absolutely. Absolutely, y'all. Definitely make sure you reach out to the new black media. I'm one of them, one of the heavyweights. And we're going to be broadcasting uh, live on election night, I'm going to have the call lines open so we can speak to brothers and sisters all across the country so we can definitely keep an eye, a close eye on this because this is a very serious subject. That lets you know that basically everything that we have uh, purported uh, about what's going on with the Democratic plantation, this is their way of saying it doesn't matter what you guys say. You guys don't like us. You guys don't vote for us. You guys don't participate in an election process. We're going to take it any damn way. So this shows you how serious they are about continuing to implement the destructive policies of Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. I keep looking at my social media timeline and a lot of people DM me and they email me a lot of different things. And I'm absolutely flooded with voter all throughout the country. You guys, basically, whatever you see, I want you to amplify it. All right, let's keep it going. I think I cannot pronounce your name, but it's it's something sage. It's not my, my brother, say somebody else. 
Hi, uh, thanks, Black Alpha. I can't agree with you anymore with everything that you've st stated in this uh, space so far. Uh, the fact is that people just aren't talking about the globalist agenda more and people really aren't looking at the bigger picture because I feel that people are very afraid to start talking about it. You are completely 100% right that the Democratic Party do not care about the war in Ukraine. The only reason why they have a foothold in the in, in Ukraine is so they can keep keep printing money, devalue the dollar, and maintain, maintain and centralise power within the government because when people become more poor, that's when they have less power, of course. If you're richer, then you can buy land, you can have property, you can have more of a voice within society. They want to create a society of um, essentially, of course, um, people who rent, right? Once they've come created a whole generation of renters that's how they can control you with your finances that's state you know that's essentially stage one and part of the plan you see i w i lived in china for several years and i don't want to go too deep into the rabbit hole of china but i lived in china for uh, about five years and the reason why they want america to become like china is because it's an authoritarian dictatorship right there's a there's a big reason why they have a huge influx of mass immigration and it's not because you know it's once again the democrats like to take the moral high ground moral high ground with ukraine moral high ground with uh, immigrants by claiming that they're refugees what's the what's the reason because they know that it doesn't help the economy they state that it, is, it helps the economy but it clearly doesn't right because once again people are, you know the government has given them welfare just exactly the same what's happening in the uk more taxes more welfare to the illegal immigrants that are flooding the country right so what's the reason why why are they doing it right this is my theory uh, they want to create fear within the country ultimate fear within the country division and fear. because once they've installed fear they can go on to the next stage right when people are scared and they're in the homes the next stage is is go go oh, okay there's we can keep you safe and the way we can keep you safe is put facial recognition cameras on every street corner so we can track where the illegal immigrants are that's that's what we'll do oh we can keep you safe we'll have a digital id tracking record where we can have social credit systems where we can track uh, uh, your every movement you know your educational records we know every single Single part, every single thing that you're doing. That's what they want to achieve, just like they do in China. It's exactly the same thing. Now, I'll land with one thing. What's really ironic is that they attacked Trump in 2016 with Russian collusion, right? And I'm like, it doesn't make sense because if Russia wanted Trump to be pr become president, Trump was hardline when it comes to foreign policy with Russia. What what would be the reason why they want the the government, the Biden and uh, the Democrats in power? Is because what's happened? In, you know what happened with leaving Afghanistan, leaving billions of dollars. You know if you if you connect all the dots, it all links to this globalist agenda of what they want to achieve with BRICS. And I wouldn't be surprised that the Democrats are not being funded by bricks but it's so funny that people on the left go oh you know like the like someone just attacked you now a uh, uh, black alpha they said oh are you being paid by russia F off it's the left that's probably being paid by russia if you really opened your mind if you really critically think it's the left being paid by him because they want to become russia they want to become this authoritarian country like china and russia because that they want to become a communist because that's how they control people Right? It just doesn't make any sense. Vote Trump, vote MAGA, because he'll put more money in your pocket, and he won't just put more money in your pocket. He'll give you more. Uh, he'll give you more power, more power to the people, and more power with with your voice. Voting with your wallet, voting with freedom of speech. That's what he wants to achieve. Make America great again. Let's go. Even though I'm British, I wish I could. F vote, but I'm doing the best I can through my uh, X account by pushing this. Sh you know, keep pushing it, keep pushing it, keep pushing and make, like you say, make it too big to goddamn rig. Because, you know, Trump, I mean, Britain also needs Trump. Britain need, desperately needs Trump. Because if, if Trump doesn't get in, where Britain's also f***.
because if you look what's happening in the UK, it's the same things happening, but dialed to, to 11. All the illegal immigrants that are coming in, uh, nationalistic patriots uh, who are speaking out, getting arrested um, against the, the mass immigration, it's all going to shit because of the globalist agenda. Anyway, sorry for my rant, but, uh, Black Alpha, but I'm 100% 100% agree with every single uh, thing you say. Everyone should wake the f up, to be honest. Sorry for my language as well. Okay, Brother Black, I'm back. Can you hear me? You sound good, brother. Okay, um, you said something earlier, and I just wanted um, clarification on it. Did you say that Trump was president before? He absolutely was. And did you... S so, we weren't in chains? The chains that Joe Biden said we'd be back in, right? No, we weren't. It, Jim Crow didn't didn't come around. Nope. The the Jim Crow that uh, James Clyburn just said that we'd be back in. Nope. Never happened. <laughs> we 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 didn't all die. No, no. We we'd be some damn good ghosts if we were. But I, I believe we're alive and well. Okay. I I just, I just I, yeah. Because maybe I, I don't know. I, I don't seem to remember that. Maybe I'm um maybe I'm four years old. Maybe, yeah, because I, I don't seem to remember that. Okay, um, I just wanted clarity on that. I, th I thought you were lying for a second. So uh, let's go to Glenn Moore. It's on you. Glenn Moore, C-L-L-R, Glenn Moore. Yeah, sorry, the C-L-L-R is, uh, is councillor. Um, it's an elected member of government in the Republic of Ireland. Um, I, I came in here because I, I, I listened to the American politics uh, very well. Um and it's more of just a warning, and it's the same with the uh, the United Kingdom guy that was speaking on the the same topic. Um, the Republic of Ireland and the United Kingdom has been absolutely decimated by Marxist and far left ideologies to the point where our people are actually struggling to take back control. Um, not 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 just um, not just your your daily life, but our, our people have been poisoned by. Um, uh, by the medias and you have it in your own state as well the cnn um and, and you have the, the democratic party which is is very diverse um very um did they, they like to make the way, the way i'd like to say it is um you know if i if i look at the republicans and this is why i have a great respect for them is that um and especially when it comes to like white americans or black americans on the republican side and this is where I, I'm very proud. Of you, is that you you all say you're Americans. You don't you don't hear that on the other side. It's always this white guys for Harris or or um, African Americans, and the all Republicans is here. I hear is American. Um, so this this is why I find you 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 have to win um, because if 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 Trump doesn't get into power, um, he, he's a lot. He, he's ho he's hope for a lot of us in in Europe because we're 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 also dealing with the same problem. Uh, I, I, I at this stage I would have lost I would have lose faith in in democracy at this stage because um like people people's tolerance in the Republic of Ireland is running very thin of what's happening um you, you're talking I I, I I I don't want to go into it but it, you 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 know the problems of illegal immigration um there, there's a lot of crime going there's a the crime has gone sky high in the Republic of Ireland and it's gone sky high in the United Kingdom as well um you and you see that in the in the USA as well your people nobody wants this um it's going to destroy the West and if, if, if you don't as I'm saying if Trump doesn't get in power um I, I don't know what you're going to do and I don't know what the West will do because um it, it it'll be a nightmare for all of us. So I I really hope whatever whatever chance you do have and, and to assure that she doesn't she because I, I very much believe she will she. Um and that, that itself is absolutely frightening. Um so that's I just wanted to come in there and, and show my support to Americans. So um I really hope you uh I really hope you Trump true because um the whole the, the, those that are even against Trump need him. Um, because you you don't want the Marxists in control of your country. Um, they they will destroy it. It's already happened to the Republic of Ireland. It's happened to the United Kingdom. And I I don't mean to be rude to Sapien, the the United Kingdom guy, but the the the, the old enemy of the Irish has been the British for for a long long time for seven hundred years. And in my opinion, the British have been defeated. And that's a horrible thought. I, I, I would rather the British as my neighbour than the force Islamic power across the Irish Sea. Um, it's it's gone to drastic levels and, and this needs to be stopped. So, yeah, I just wanted to show my support to the American people. So I hope I hope Trump gets through. Uh, thank you for that. Thank you for that. Absolutely. Thank you much for that. Thanks for the contribution. Notice, everybody. Notice, everybody in the room right now. I want everybody to notice. We've had a lot of people from the United States of America and then we've had a lot of people from foreign countries. 
And immigration seems to be something that people galvanize on. And we're all seeing the same thing. So as we say in America, the average American sees the immigration invasion as a severe problem. But the only people over there in the corner that see it as this great thing are the Democrats. I think I'm going to have to update that and say that the world sees immigration as a problem. And the only people who see it as a good thing are the Democrats. So basically, it's the whole damn world versus the Democrats in terms of immigration. Now, I was actually in Europe, all right, when I was a young man, when they went into the European Union. The European Union, they don't want any more in Europe, for those who don't know, basically because it has turned into an influx of an immigration crisis. And it has been to bring in all of these different people and elevate them over European citizens. So as we here in the United States of America, especially Foundation Black Americans, we are in a delineation process and we are separating ourselves from every single African who shows up or Caribbean person who shows up. And we're saying, no, no, we are an exclusive, distinctive lineage, heritage and culture that is also going on throughout the world. Nationality in terms of this is where I'm from. Notice as the world becomes more of a I am a lineage based American. The Democrats are trying to get us away from lineage based Americans. The Democrats want us to be just every goddamn body. Anybody. My brother Sage says it all the time. He said, if everybody can be black, then nobody's black. This is what they really want. And if everybody can be an American, then nobody's an American. Eventually, I wouldn't be surprised if they say Americans are just anybody who comes here. Remember, Joe Biden said that he believes that all the undocumented immigrants are already American. That is treasonist, okay? Absolutely. And being a dictator to the American public is treasonous, and it's coming from the same people that we will all be watching. And while I got everybody in here right now, I want you to look up in the Jumbotron, and I want you guys to follow me right here, and y'all smash that link, and y'all follow and subscribe, Black Alpha Network. But most importantly, we're going live on election night and we're going to have a marathon because these people do not sleep when it comes to their foul play. So we will not sleep when it comes to exposing them. We're not going to go to bed and then we wake up and Kamala Harris is winning. So we will be broadcasting live on election night. Make sure that you watch then. But in order to watch then, I need you to subscribe now to the Black Alpha Network. And I appreciate everybody who's in there. We just hit 18,000 today. So appreciate the love, you guys. Let's keep the hands going. Let's keep the hands going. Let's keep the hands going. Um, Soheem, is that it? And then to Jenna. Yeah, Soheem. Go ahead, doing, Black Alpha? I'm good, brother. It's on you, family. Yeah, so I just wanted to say that uh, I think the, the, the term too big to rig, I think that that's kind of like, it kind of cancels itself out because in my opinion, there's no such thing as something being too big to rig when we talk about, you know, just the power structure and government and, you know, just people being able to do what they want to do. Basically, I mean, we it's been several points that's been made up to this point that you've made and others have made. So, you know, there's that, it, it, that lets you know that there's no. But I guess what I'm trying to say is that if they if they want to get this woman in power, she's going to be in power. That's pretty much what I'm trying to say. Like, it's it's not it's not going to be too big. Like, oh, we just won by so much that even didn't work. Like, no, if they if they want to work, they can make work. So I say that to say I I I live in Georgia, too. I think you said you live in Georgia. I went out and we, we took the kids uh, trick or treating. And we was down by like, uh, I don't know if you live in Atlanta, uh, Black Alpha, but I, we was down in like the um, little five point area. And I lie to you not, every house that we went to, it was a, uh, what, what was, it, it was a sign that a lot of different people had or some like that. So it was all these little catchphrases, all these little democratic, you know, uh, base catchphrases, all these walls, Harris signs in every single, every single yard, like every yard. And it almost gives me the impression it, it, it in my gut, I feel like those signs were like just put out there that morning. I'm not going to lie. Like, okay, we know a whole bunch of kids going to be trick or treating. The parents about to be out here. Um, let, let's, let's put this, cue the signs, cue the signs, put the, every single yard. I haven't seen one. I ain't seen one. I, I barely see e any Trump signs anywhere. Matter of fact, I was getting on the freeway. It was a, a, a white man. He had his uh, his uh, emergency lights on getting onto the freeway, pulled over to the side before you get actually on the freeway. 
he lining the whole both sides of the road, Harris walls, Harris walls. I mean, he's it's like 20 signs on both sides that this dude don't put out just in that spot. Also, last night on the freeway coming back up uh, 85, we saw three billboards with the same vote Kamala Big as hell on the billboard. And it was like the billboard that was like the changing billboard, not the ones that just stays, you know, stationary. But just so happened, even though it was the one that like changes to different images, every single one somehow was the vote Kamala one. So I say all that to say that I, up until last week, I'm like, all right, Trump got it. I'm not voting for Trump, but I do think that we got, we got to get him back. We just got to. I'm not voting. I'm looking at the couch. As most of the family is, I'm looking at the couch, but, it, it, you know, I want Trump to come back just for the simple fact that, you know, all of us keep talking about immigration. And like you was just kind of making the same point, we're all on code about the immigration thing. And it kind of seems like I think it's safe to say, like, that's the only real uh, consolation prize that we'll get. As a collective group, that's the only consolation prize that we probably will get as as FBAs, like, is the immigration thing. And it's obviously people who are non-FBA who um who are on board with the with the with the immigration uh you know issue as well. But as FBAs, the only thing people keep saying, uh well, when Trump get back, business is gonna be better and you're gonna have more money in your pocket. And that part, I'm like, eh. Whether Kamala, we FBA is money. We hustle. So whether it's Kamala, Biden, Trump, we going to make money. I don't, I, I hate that narrative of if one or the other is in power, we're going to have more or less money depending on who's in power. Like I don't, FBAs are hustlers. Like we going to make our money regardless of who's, who's, who's the sitting president. But um, it, uh, what I was saying about, about Trump is, is, up until like a week ago, I'll say, up until like a week ago, it felt like he had it. Like, okay, cool, he got this. And then it's like a turn was kind of made with the little, with the, the the carving watermelon joke from the comedian, which I didn't get offended by that because that dude has a whole like little show and all the, com all the comics that are on there. I think... Um, I remember that, if we remember that black comment that made like the super weird joke against black people and he went viral that dude he's on like in that same little group so that's what they do they they kind of force these you know knee jerk jokes to try to you know get clicks and views but it seemed like not because that dude said that but it seemed like that was a turning point lebron james just endorsed kamala they talking about cardi b about to come out and endorse kamala she got into it with some i guess influencer or some youtuber because she was going on a rant about how she ain't supporting no more politicians. Brother, so he, and, do they yeah. do they think that Cardi B is going to change anything? Really? Who's they? No, when I say they, I mean the Democrats because I, I know they're excited. Oh, no, absolutely. They no, really she's not going to change nothing. She's going to change anything. Cardi B. She's not going to change nothing. But the issue, but this is the issue, brother. The issue is, the issue is the, where the brother was calling her out at, but he still made a good point. He was basically saying that uh, she went on this long rant about how all po all politicians are fake. I ain't supporting nobody. Ain't nobody for us. Whoop de whoop de whoop. And all of a sudden, she jumping on the she she joining the K hive. So it's like, okay, that's a bag. We know what that is. Kamala was like, you sure you don't want to? And slid or something, just like they slid Usher something, just like they slid LeBron something, just like they slid Beyonce something, just like they slid Eminem something, just like they sent, slid Oprah something. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And I think these endorsements, they are heavy. If it was just one or two people, I'd be like, oh, whatever. But these endorsements are heavy, man. We, we talking about Oprah, Cardi B, LeBron James, who was a, a, a fake dip his toe in the water, you know, social activist and then he take it out when he wants to but that's a big endorsement for lebron james to put up a tweet and say vote kamala harris that's huge you know what hey, I'm i gotta saying? jump so, in bro like i have you laying playing fam we gotta spin these hands bro <laughs> yeah 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 my bad my bad uh I, I, so I, i'll land with this i just think the same thing the same the, the same thing uh that got trump into power is the same thing that is kind of like a curse man and it's it, I, you know I, 
I think they may give it to Kamala. They might let her in, but I'll land with that. I appreciate you uh, letting me uh, get the mic, uh, Black Alpha. Much respect, family. Absolutely, bro. Question to, or a question. I just want to make a little statement here. Doesn't matter what celebrity they bring forth, that's not going to move the needle. That does not get us. If you're not, if you don't understand anything in 2024, the black vote is not moved by celebrities. I don't give a damn, excuse me, I don't care about what Magic Johnson has to say. I don't care about what LeBron James have to say. I don't care about what Beyonce has to say. We do not follow celebrities. We do not live the same lives as celebrities live. We do not come in contact with the Beyonce's of the world, the LeBron James of the world, the Eminem's of the world, you know, he's not black, the whoever in the hell else they want to name. We do not come in contact with these people. We like their music. We like them playing basketball. We like uh, what acting, all of that. Great. But they do not dictate our lives. We use them for entertainment. Go ahead, Brother Black. Yeah, absolutely. I was just, just going to say that. Um, I actually think that the celebrity thing is hurting the Democrats because Americans are out here dealing with severe inflation. We're dealing with, as we spoke about, the immigration crisis, uh, struggling hard. Uh, we just seen just the union strike happen, FEMA and all that. Nobody wants to listen to Cardi B. And let's be honest with you, who they're going to get are not beloved celebrities anyway. Nobody respects these individuals on an intellectual level at all. And let's also not forget, all of these people did the same thing with Hillary Clinton in 2016. How'd that work out? And make it even a step further, a lot of these celebrities who are on these damn Diddy tapes are out here. J-Lo, eh, they looking at you funny. Beyonce and Jay-Z, they went into hiding, and then she just popped out again. Uh, LeBron James, you were on the Diddy tapes, and we got LeBron James wearing a damn tutu. Okay, so a lot of these people have been running this game, and they're not really respected. We're not dealing with respected celebrities. They're getting A-list uh, people who have conspiracies around them and some real funny style stuff. They're getting B-list, C-list, D-list. Nobody's really hearing that right now. What I see, and I'm going to be honest with you, from what I see when I travel, I see far more Trump support. I, once again, I've been to a MAGA rally. I've been to two of them. And I've been to a Kamala Harris event, if that's what you want to call it. It was a cook-off, and they danced, and they sang, and they were goofing around. Nobody was serious at all. And I seen when Donald Trump came to Savannah, Georgia, which is an actual Democratic district, he shut down all of downtown, and the lines went from the place where he was at, which was in full capacity, and they had to turn away thousands of people at the door. And it went all the way down, and it was blocking businesses. Kamala, people went there, they walked right in the venue. It really wasn't like that. And also, let me say this about the state of Georgia. Georgia is Atlanta and then everybody else. This is why Kamala Harris keeps going back to Atlanta. She's, she was just in Atlanta with Obama last Thursday and she's going back again. They keep going to Atlanta. Atlanta is not the state of Georgia. When you start talking about Savannah, you start talking about Augusta, you start talking about Columbus, now you're talking about Georgia, all right? And I see far more Donald Trump support than you see Kamala Harris. They go to get some of the people in Atlanta to support. And then also a lot of people in Atlanta don't like Kamala Harris neither, okay? But however, it's kind of similar to when you go to a lot of these big cities, the rural places, which make up 80% of the population there, these folks is really rocking with Donald Trump. And then maybe in the big cities, they're hubs for the Democrats and the liberals. But what we are seeing now is a lot of these major cities, Trump supporters are showing up. Trump right now, I believe, has an all-time support from black Americans that the Republican Party has ever had. I believe that uh, Latino people are supporting the Democratic establishment. That's why that little thing didn't work when they were doing the joke, because a lot of Latinos say, I don't care, I'm still voting for them. And you're seeing a lot of Americans, you're seeing people called in in this space from all over the world. I believe that Donald Trump has a massive support. I just don't think that it's reflective in the news. See, once again, if you watch the news, they're going to tell you that Kamala Harris is the best thing since sliced bread. She has this huge support. But when you leave your house family, do y'all really see that? Do you really? And the people who do support Kamala Harris, are they not the ones that you knew were going to vote for her any damn way? Let, let's be real. Let's be real. Let's separate fact from fiction, okay? Let's talk about the real. Do you really see a lot of support from Kamala Harris? Do you see people out there really going hard for Kamala? Or is it the same damn people? Who, the black church? Is that who it's going to be? All right, is it going to be the black church? All right, we knew they was going to vote any damn way. They're going to vote until they RIP. That's just what it is. Is it who? The rainbow community? Of course they're going to vote for them. 
Does she move the needle like my brother Say said? Has she garnered any new votes? I don't believe so. I know one thing. Donald Trump has a lot more people supporting him this go around. Kamala, you got the same outdated people anyway. And this is why you get that news coverage so heavy because they have to perpetrate fraudulent support for her because she doesn't really have it in the real world. When you leave your house, you see far more Donald Trump. When you leave your house, you see far less Kamala Harris. You turn on the news, they try to make it look like she's the queen of America. No, and let me say this, and this is my main point. This time last year, Kamala Harris ranked as the worst polled vice president in American history. Do not let them rewrite this woman, y'all. She was ranked as the lowest rated vice president in American history one year ago, even worse than two-time war vice president Dick Cheney. Nobody liked Kamala a year ago. So we got to ask this question. If nobody liked her last year and she was ranked as the lowest vice president, I'm talking about a year ago, how she go from the vice president to the leading presidential candidate? Then we got to make the statement of this. That sounds like news propaganda. But guess what? News propaganda only works on national television. It doesn't work out here in the real world. That's what I believe. Let's keep the hands going. We got to flow. So I need everybody to give you, I'll give you a... 60, 90 seconds. We got to keep it going because we got some things we got to take care of. Uh, Jenna is on you. First of all, I don't take stock in any celebrities. They don't feed me. They don't pay my bills. The only bad thing about it is a lot of the celebrities from the Diddy list, my son loves. He listens to and he is bummed out and he's starting to realize how the world really works. Yeah, you can like their music, but as people, they are not the same people that they portray at all and with the voting i really in the beginning of october i had really high hopes for erie county being turning red flipping red i went to the erie rally i went to the second butler rally and and, uh, trump had this has the state easily but there's too much going on and they're getting caught and they're doing it out in the open you got levittown you got bucks county and i put and i put a picture on your page um to show you what i got off the tv to like show you what's going on because nobody is covering it we have an australian news crew we have a belgian news crew we have a german news crew and a french news crew that are covering it but that's about all it, it's driving us crazy. If you go driving around, there are Trump signs everywhere. There are hardly any Camilla Harris signs. And then our county had to make a new fine because the Harris people were stealing all the Trump signs. And so now if you get busted stealing a Trump sign, I think it's like $150 for a fine, which I'm glad they started doing because it's wrong. I don't care. Don't come on my property and take my sh-. But celebrities, they have nothing to do with our lives. They All they do is they get us enamored with them and they take our money. We buy all the products. Who was it What that got caught with, uh, she was selling, pro- what is it, Martha Stewart? What are the famous people were got caught with sweatshops or something? These celebrities are not good people. Once they get above us, they have nothing in common with us at all, ever. They do not go to the grocery store. They do not buy their own gas. They do not, they don't even need to worry about inflation or anything. Because if things go sky high, they don't. They have the money to buy whatever they want when they want it. They don't get our food. They get imported food from overseas. I'll land with that. Yeah, I agree. Um, celebrities do, don't have any sway. I don't. They used to, I guess, back in the fifties and the sixties. This is two thousand twenty-four. Celebrities because we don't fell have in love with sway. them. We wanted to be them. You know what I mean? We look up to them. Oh, they're so cute or they're so handsome. We want to be them. How much plastic surgery did American girls get because of? Kim, because of the Kardashians? Oh my God. And they're the, like the most amoral people, immoral people to follow. Holy crap. Interesting. Brother EJ, Eric Johnson, what you got for us? What's up, man? If y'all can look up in the Jumbotron, these Democratic shields are so scandalous. Y'all see what I put up in the Jumbotron. They trying to bribe, they trying to bribe your brother with $700 here voting for Kamala Harris and to be showing my support to Kamala Harris. Now, you out here giving illegal aliens $10,000 a month, and you mean you're going to try to give me $700 and the election is a couple of days away. If I was going to do that, you was going to have to come with some more money 
But I ain't built like that. You know, I work for a living and this just goes to show you that these Democratic are just running scared. You know, they've been eating too many of those collard greens with those spices in the bathtub. I don't know if they've been in the toilet for too long soaking, but, you know, I don't know if Doug doing something to Kamala at night to make sure that she don't cook them collard greens the right way. But this is just desperation from these Democratic um shields. And that last dude who was in here like an hour or so ago, they'll say anything and do anything when it comes to them to try to keep getting money for this Ukrainian-Russian war. And we always get people like that in these spaces, but, you know, y'all handled it like real true Gs. You know, the FBA um, energy was just all over the place. So, you know, I can't wait till this election is over with. And I'm going to just tell you the truth right now, man. I can deal with four more years of Donald Trump because I know how he get down, but I can't deal with four years of Kamala Harris. I'm two-way all day. I'm a, um, dealing with this lady. We'll be liable to be out here uh, having permits for sticks and stuff. They'll be trying to take our Second Amendment rights away because it's already hard out here for, you know, foundational black Americans to practice their Second Amendment rights. Everything that we do, they just run up on us like we some robots or something to just try to take care of us. But this whole situation with these Democrats, hopefully it won't work. I'm, I ain't even voting, but I take four years of Trump all day, every day. I, I could deal with four more years of Trump, so I'm just going to land my plane. Wait, EJ, you said they gave you seven hundred dollars. What about the catfish? No, they were trying to bribe me with seven hundred dollars. They sent me a text and everything, brother. I was like, nope. Then a couple of days ago, I, I don't know how these people be getting my damn number. These folks kept calling me about who are you voting for, and I said the couch and hung up on her ass like she was a Georgia Power worker, like I was late on my bill, which I'm currently not. I pay my bills on time. These people out here are so desperate. You don't really see a lot of these other people in these other groups, you know, getting bribed and trying to, you know, come at these Democrats like that. You know, they giving them tangibles. They don't got to do that like that. But, you know, you, you know some black folks that be in these churches catching the Holy Ghost just by touching Kamala Harris. I don't know if they taking the juice from the bathtub and giving it to the people in the congregation, but you know, these people just been going crazy over the past couple of months. There's built like over stuff, teddy bears crashing out, calling black folks all type of N words, talking about, I can't stand y'all, um, helping Kamala Harris. We need to be doing this and doing that. But you never hear these folks at their jobs trying to get a raise or something. They'll give all their energy and their support to a person who ain't, who's not even black, who doesn't even come from the lineage, who ain't going to do nothing for you or your community. You'll give all your energy to some alleged black woman that ain't gonna never do shit for us but you can't give your energy to your kids nor your community so these people are just desperate man and you know tuesday the fifth is um kamala harris last um it is kamala harris last day in the office i agree brother i agree hey yeah we got to give everybody right. 60, 60 seconds family we got to move because i got to get uh i got to go live here in seven yeah, yeah yeah that's cool thanks again the only thing i want to ask is brother black alpha b-a-n when are you going to make some T-shirts and put them on the market, brother? To go ahead and you and Sage and y'all get together, start printing those things so we can go ahead and start ordering them. I'll be your first order. And I promise I'll get more than one. I'll land there, brother. Chill off. <laughs> Much respect, family. Hey, I I'm going to make one that says, uh, uh, vote against uh, Kamala's collie greens. And I'm going to have a big ass bathtub on it with a big dirty circle on it, family. That's how we do it. All right. It's let's be too late by going. then, Black. She, she, she going to have been lost by then. It's going to be too late. Yeah, big, big facts, family. Let's let's keep that in mind. Yes, indeed. Okay, so who else we got? We got to keep it rolling, fam. Um, 60 seconds to the speakers. Um, I cannot pronounce your name. Um, K-H-A. I don't want to mess it up. So it's on you. You got your hand up. Hi. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, I appreciate it. So the Democrats, what I realized, like, Black people, they voted for 60 years, and we got nothing out of it. Our community hasn't been... Uh, uh, been prioritized, like, you know, schools, you know, the education, like, you know, the trades. To give out all these uh, money and resources to other groups except for us. They haven't given us reparations. They haven't given us uh, the uh, anti-hate crime bill. Biden just signed them uh, when he was the president. And I was like, bro, like, are you serious? Is this what we voted for? And we still, like, you know, our lives, like, we're still dealing with the brunt, like, you know, the cost of living, like, you know, food prices, gas, diesel, etc. And it is time to, like, you know, send a message to Democrats. No, you're not going to disrespect us no more. 
enough is enough. And how, and like, I'm just, uh, it's just, uh, very sad that the, uh, the Shields, the other Democrats, they're not waking up. They're, 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 the Democrats are paying them. And they're saying these, they're cussing us out, saying these words, oh, if you don't vote for, uh, Camilla, then, uh, we'll go back to Jim Crow. And it's all. Much respect. Appreciate that. Absolutely. They're crashing out in a major way. All right. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Much respect. Much respect. All right. Let's keep the hands going. Uh, Bring the storm. It's on you. Bring the storm. It's on you, family. Bring the storm. It's on you. Okay. That's what's up. Man, I've been uh, following this stuff for quite some time. And it just seems like the Democratic, actually both parties, don't really serve no purpose for us trying to move forward and uh, get the most out of what we got going on. And I don't know, man. I think that what you're doing is wonderful. I think that um, the grassroots is doing a lot of powerful things. And I'm even noticing that a lot of other are calling into the spaces and stuff like that and paying attention. Um, and I just want to understand, you know, keep on doing what you're doing, man. Mad love and respect to you. Okay. Much respect, family. Stay safe out there, brother. Much love. Much love. Let me say this before we get to the rest of the speakers. Much love and respect, though, fam. Um, let me say this. This is what I feel. I feel like this. I feel Kamala Harris does not have a lot of support. I feel that it's a creation of the news media. This was the lowest vice president in the United States of American history until now. All of a sudden they love her. It's all from the news media. You guys, this is all contrived. And I believe unofficially they're going to try to make Kamala Harris win the election. Because remember, Donald Trump is more of a rogue politician that serves the American people in terms of closed borders, in terms of this crazy inflation not happening. And Kamala Harris is the poster child for the elites, which means open borders, means foreign aid, means serving everybody except for Americans. So in this space, we've had a lot of people call in from all over the world. We've had a lot of people from right here in the United States of America, from all different types of Americans. And I see that Trump has a big base of people who like him. And I see Kamala Harris just has a bunch of paid Democratic shields and that doesn't move anything. Our words are documented ahead of time so they can't spin it on us. They will not scapegoat us and call us names and we will have it all spotlighted and highlighted and laid out for everyone to see. We got two more speakers and then we got a row. Oh, I see my brother Afro too. Um, My brother Afro got to go first. So Afro to you and then Erica and then Z-Man, Angelic, and then we got to bring it home. This was a great space. This was absolutely a great space. And uh, shout out to you, Black Alpha and Sage, for hosting this. I want to let people understand or let people remind people, I'm sorry, that when Biden was running, everybody wanted Biden to drop out because everybody knew Biden was mentally unfit. And I want to remind people again, and I've been saying this on um, my platform for the longest time, it was not just the fact that Biden was mentally unstable, the fact that he was losing the swing states. It was all of his destructive decisions that caused America to go in this crisis was the main reason. Now, the media tried to play up the fact that, oh, well, people just don't like Biden because Biden is old. Well, Biden was old in 2020. Everybody knew Biden was old. Everybody's going to just get older. Nobody's going to stay the same age. So, yes, his age was a factor and his mental stability was a concern. But the issue, the real issue that people had with Biden was that his the decisions that he made, what the policies that he pushed when he was in office was the open border, was the crazy inflation, was the sending billions and billions and billions of American money overseas when the American people needed help here. That was the reason people did not like Biden. So the media tried to uh, create this confusion that, oh, no, it's just because of age. Biden's really done a great job, but it's just the fact that he's old, you know, and nothing nobody can do about that. So I knew there was always something when they tried to do it like that. When Biden flunked at the debate, did absolutely terrible, the worst debate in presidential debate history. When he did that, everybody said, OK, he can't he can't run no more. Because he's going to lose in the landslide. It's probably going to be the worst loss in presidential history if he continues to run. So, of course, that's when Obama and Nancy Pelosi decided to form a coup and they got with the media and they decided to get him to get kicked out. So 
With that being said, then he had endorsed Kamala. When he endorsed Kamala, a lot of people were excited, but a lot of people were excited just because they had a more capable candidate. That's the only reason. Just because they had somebody who didn't look like they were going to pass out or fall asleep in the middle of a debate. That's the only reason. It's not because anybody liked her. They just like the fact that, oh, look, somebody who looks like they're alive. Oh, look, somebody who looks like they know that they're here. That's, that's the only reason anybody really liked her. And the media played that up. Oh my God, she has this support. She has this support. Because the media understands that most people are followers. The media understands that if the they'll tell people that most people like her, most people are going to be all like, well, if most people like her, she can't really be that bad. Then I guess I'm, I guess there's something to her then. So the media tried to play that as long as possible. They stretched it as long as possible. And so people started to notice like, hey, oh, I mean, you don't really have anything on your website. You don't really have any policies. You don't really, you don't really have anything. And then people started to remember that. And it was, oh, give her time, give her time, give her time. And she took forever. She took like a month and a half to drop any policies, which is pretty much the same policies of Joe Biden. And people were like, hold on, give her time. She just got in. And the media constantly got trying to make excuses and telling us to give her time. And she would be better. She would do better. And then she started doing interviews. And then she started doing press conferences. And then she really started getting in front of people and taking questions and receive, giving answers. And then that's when it started to go downhill. Right after the DNC. And I was saying, yeah, all of the party vibes and everything, yeah, that's going to end. Because you can't really, you can't party your way to the White House. After the DNC, now people are going to really want to um, you to articulate your policies. Because no policies were discussed at the DNC, which was a big concern for a lot of people. That was the wake-up call that people had an issue with. Because the RNC... People were, whether you love it or hate it, people were discussing policies. People were discussing an agenda. At the DNC, not so much. So that was the first big concern. And then afterwards, it was just downhill because really the American people were reminded that they didn't like her either. The American people were reminded how weak of a candidate she is. This lady literally acts as if she has no experience in politics whatsoever. She literally breaks down, acts nervous, acts like she doesn't know what to do. She acts like she lied on her resume. You know when somebody lies on their resume and then they just to get the job and never think that they would be questioned for it. And then next thing you know, they're being questioned and they don't know what to do. She doesn't know what to do. And she's been president. She's been vice president for four years, a senator, a prosecutor. And this she is literally the most clueless politician I've ever seen. I've seen politicians I've disagreed with. And it's one thing to disagree with somebody. It's another thing for somebody to be clueless. Biden's not clueless. He's just sleep. That's the only thing. Biden's not clueless when he thinks, you know what I'm saying? It's just his brain shuts down. But at least you you feel like he knew what he was trying to go for. It's just like he was trying to uh, talk about a million different things at the same time. And his, his brain just couldn't keep up with with words. That's 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 Biden. But Kamala, she just literally just clueless. Like goofy. It's almost a joke. It's a parody. And this is why the American people are rejecting Kamala. This is why she's never been able to have that base. And why her rating went down after the DNC, which was never really that high to begin with. So don't let the media confuse you about the hype. The people, the country knows how bad of a character, uh, candidate she is. This is why she's not getting the support, despite what people are telling you, despite what the celebrities are telling you. Despite what some of the polls are trying to indicate, she has a um, uh, lead in, in some of the swing states. I don't believe she has a lead in any of the swing states, to be honest. Maybe tied, but I don't think she has a very large lead, especially within the margin of error beyond that. I don't think so. She, There's no logical, legitimate reason she should be able to win. None. It is illogical. Somebody can get in in the last five months of the race and then win the presidency that has never happened in american politics before it goes against history and i'm gonna just say it like that damn okay um erica
It's on you. Hi. So I just wanted to say um, in regards to what that lady was saying from Erie, um, I think part of the problem of why there's not detention is because like 83% of Erie is white, only 6% is black. And I think this is a real opportunity actually for the black community, especially to really be lo vocal and draw attention to the fact that every single vote that's being flipped um, and every time that CAM is going to court and trying to force the illegal um, alien votes on the voter rolls, that's canceling out. It's worse than Jim Crow. It's canceling out a person's vote. And I think that if we flip it to like, this is racist, and everything that she's done is against the black community from her um, decisions in the California um, courts to even, you know, putting on her fake accent to um, talking at McDonald's with black workers, pretending like she was, you know, an, just another black person. I think that if it's if we, you know, readjust the narrative and make it that what they're doing is racist and she's being a puppet by the one percent elite global men, white men, basically. That's what I think could draw attention. That's it. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Well, yeah, one more thing. One more thing, too, is that I believe also if you listen to the narrative on the media when they're saying that Trump is going to be using the military and that they are I think they're planning it, looking at the Department of Defense um, directive that was put out. I think that that's what they were, they were planning on. And I think if the black and white and you know, all communities come together and realize what's going on, I think that that would be the, you know, the most effective thing that we can do. And all, yeah, thank you. All of that stuff about Trump is coming to get everybody and he's going to round Americans up and he's going to put black folks on the front of the line and Jim Crow is going to come back. We don't believe any of that. Just the same way we don't believe that Kamala Harris has any leads in the polls, that Kamala Harris has this groundswell of support. None of that is true. Just exactly what you just said a second ago. They're out here using immigrants and everybody else to be elevated above us and we cannot have that all the way up until election day because there's nothing better than pressure all right there's nothing better than pressure and we have to put it on everybody to understand it and that's why you lie and that's why you have news coverage that slants towards you they do all of these things you guys because she can't win because she does not have the support if you got support you don't have to do that that's why we say we don't see donald trump doing it because we see that Donald Trump has support. It's as simple as that. But we got to keep rolling. And I got to go ahead and get up out of here. Anybody who's in here right now, y'all tap into the Black Alpha Network. And y'all also make sure y'all subscribe, man. We got to get out of here. Um, peace and love. Much respect to everybody. One love. We're going to continue to watch this. We're going to continue to break it down. And we're going to go live and understand every single thing that they're doing. We are on them. Ain't nobody going to come in here and tell us that we have to abide by rules that they don't abide by. So certified salute to everybody. It was a great, great, great conversation. We had people call in from all over the world. And what it seems like is that everybody from all different communities don't like Kamala. We are on point. Much love and respect. Certified salute. Catch everybody on the other side.